Viewer discretion is advised. Bad girls, what you want? What you want? What you want to do? When they, when they show them, they come for you. Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Feminist Cops is filmed on location with the brave, strong women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. 315 confirmed, suspect is in 302, over. Alright, so we got two warrants out for this guy's arrest and he's not coming out, so we're gonna have to extract him. Correction, suspect is in 301. Over. Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they go for you? Wow, that tastes delicious. Mm. And, and it tastes delicious because I'm not a sociopath, so I can enjoy things. We'll be talking <laughs> about Amber Heard quite a bit today. Uh, right now, is she not on the stand? Okay, she's not on the stand exactly right now. Are they in recess? So I think so. This is one, a lot of you have asked us to discuss uh, Amber Heard a little bit more. Uh, and many of you say that you don't want to see her face, her, her, her horrible, her pretty but horrible evil face. Here's why we're going to be doing... Uh, Quite a bit of live streaming on Amber Heard later. We're going to get to Joe Biden first, former Vice President Joe Biden, and him referring to you as extremists, right? Everyone who's pro-life, everyone who actually supports the idea of abortion rights going back to the states, uh, which brings my question of the day before Amber Heard. We'll have some more questions later is, who do you think is the most extreme political group in the United States? Is it far right? Is it far left? Is it far libertarian? Who just want to smoke weed and trade Bitcoin on their couch? I don't know. The point is, we all have our thing. <laughs> But uh, I do think it's important, this Amber Heard, this is kind of a landmark case, because I was very surprised to see that the people uh, least tolerant of the shenanigans are women, particularly women who've been abused. If you run a search on Amber Heard and abuse victims right now, you will see many abuse victims speaking out, saying that this does not seem to be someone who is a victim of abuse. And at the very least, we know she is an abuser as well. Maybe Amber Heard was abused. We don't know. It doesn't look like it, but we certainly know that she was an abuser. That was admitted yesterday, that she physically abused Johnny Depp. I'm not even a fan of Johnny Depp, but the guy had the crap kicked out of him by a woman multiple times. No one is arguing that. It's just, did Johnny Depp ever retaliate? That's a difficult standard to have in a society and expecting uh, men and women to coexist. Again, it's not, do we have laws? It's, are the laws applied equally? And we know that they often aren't with hot chicks. So, uh, <laughs> before we get to the rest of that, uh, I don't know what's going to happen if they'll get, get us with copyright. You'll keep him posted, right, Tokenon? Because sometimes they do that. If we get booted here on YouTube, we're on Rumble. And every Monday through Thursday, 8, sorry, 8. Every Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 
uh, Rumble or Mug Club. We'll go to Mug Club and take your chats here today and do a little bit more live streaming of Amber Heard. They are telling me we're going to have to play a drinking game as we live stream. I, I, it's early, but it's Cinco de Mayo. Relapse. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Well, you just had something in a plastic baggie. Was that a? Please tell me it was a mint. Uh, it was a mustache. Okay. I nicked it and it's off my face now, and I'm not happy about it. It was it an accident? Yeah. All right, but well, I didn't introduce him. Hold on, let me get to you. But because first we have to introduce the star. Uh, Gerald A is not here. He's uh, just had a child. So Gerald B, how are you? You know what? I never thought I'd say it. I miss Gerald A a little bit. I really do. Yeah. I got to be honest. Uh, Gerald B, I, I don't mean to offend you. Just not as good. No, Gerald B just takes it. That's the problem. You know, the whipping. There's a difference between being a whipping post, being a good sport like Gerald A. Yeah. And just Gerald B almost just, seems to enjoy it. Almost seems to avail himself to whatever it is you want to provide. He really just gives it. Well, no, he doesn't give anything, but he does receive. He takes. Yes. You know what? It feels good to give Gerald B. Don't just be a taker. We'll get Gerald A. back in next yeah, week. Yeah, one day. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, you hear this voice. You know, he's the quickest wit, uh, quickest wit in the West. He'll be in uh, Springfield, Missouri, Lincoln, Nebraska this week. And you can go to lightofcutter.com slash tour to book tickets. Dave Landau, how are you, sir? Ahoy. Good. Good enough. Obviously, I'm Team Depp. Um, yeah, I, uh, I... I see. I'm so I, out of touch. I, I thought we were still werewolf or vampire. Is that not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I nicked my mustache last night. I'm very upset. So now I got to regrow it from scratch. Yeah, I'm regrowing it. Or leave in the comments if you think I should or shouldn't. Yeah, I, care. I, I think the comments shouldn't. Shouldn't. Yeah, I liked it. Did your wife like it? Uh, yeah. Really? I guess. I don't. Okay, that means there wasn't a conversation. Well, it's more that, just like I'll live with that. Yes, exactly. I mean, maybe. Right. That's well. That's what most wives do. They just. I looked up Tom Selleck and Burt Reynolds without a mustache yesterday, and it's like it's just. No. Not okay. Don't even try and search that with Wilford Brimley. It's just a lemon party. Now. It doesn't make sense. Don't search lemon party. Don't search Wilford Brimley. None no. of this is good. <laughs> so before we move on here to, to uh, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden, let me show you what happened yesterday. And this is the moment. This is the moment yesterday. Amber Heard was testifying. She's testifying today. And I think it's an important character study in a sociopath. We might even want to bring in Kevin later, who's a, a, a PhD candidate uh, in psychology. Um, I'm a sociopath or at least a narcissist. Yesterday, she said something that I think was maybe lost on most people, and it shocked me when I heard it, and I think it's the primary problem with third-wave feminism and condemning men for toxic masculinity and wanting it both ways. See if you can catch the, the, the terrifying part. Before I know it, he starts crying. Now. And, you know, like, I, I have never seen it an adult man cry. Um, I didn't even really see my dad cry at my grandma's funeral. You know, it's just, it's weird. And he's crying. It's weird. <laughs> so hold on, let me get this Why straight. Why you sit on the stand I, while you're crying? Well, there's no self-awareness. She's trying to emulate, right, right, what she has seen as human emotions right now. Yeah. And she doesn't realize that you shouldn't say a man crying is weird. So let's be let me be clear about this. We say toxic masculinity. You shouldn't be aggressive. You shouldn't be uh, 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 you shouldn't be a type A personality. You shouldn't take control. You shouldn't exhibit necessarily leadership qualities. These are bad things. This is toxic, toxic masculinity. You need to be open with your emotions. OK, then if you cry, it's weird. If you yell, it's abuse. If you had a cabinet, it's abuse. If you cry, it's weird. What is someone like Johnny Depp supposed to do? What is the man in your life supposed to do? Now, I know not all women feel this way, but there are a lot of women who use it against them. Come on, all of us have had a woman use it against you when you cry. You've been t I remember being in a relationship where they said, you know, you shouldn't yell, you shouldn't get mad, that's disguising your emotions. But vulnerability is, and then I cried, and they were like, bitch! I was like, I can't believe this! Well, it's not Sorry. my fault, it just happens during sex. Yes, usually after. <laughs> usually yes. her. During, after, before. And then I just cry because I'm wondering why it always happens. I'm vexed. And it's, I just can't figure it out. So what is a guy supposed to, to cry? So this is why men don't cry. It's not because men don't think it's acceptable to cry. I've always, there are acceptable times to cry. You can't cry all the time. You can't be a cry baby. Mostly unacceptable. Mostly unacceptable Mostly. for men. But certainly not in the realm of a relationship or a death in the family. In other words, it shouldn't be weird for a man to cry. But if a man cries, it's used against him. We also tell men, hey, get help. Don't be afraid to get help. Go and get help. It's brave to take that step. Unless... You have someone who wants to take half your stuff, like Amber Heard, in which case, any help that you've ever sought out is now, in the, now on display for the whole world to see. Right? You're, 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 
Your doctor-patient confidentiality goes away in a civil case with a divorce if a woman's trying to use it against you. So what is jo so what Johnny? De if Johnny Depp wanted to protect himself rather than do what is expected of him in today's anti-masculine society is not get help. So there's no record of it. Just say there's nothing wrong with me, and never cry, and keep it bottled up, and then die much younger than women. That's why life expectancy is uh, what it is. <laughs> that's what he should have done if he wanted to protect himself. This we need to pick a lane, and that's, that's why, why beers for men. Yes, except for uh, well, the Bruce Willis did those wine cooler commercials. Yeah, that's true. He did. Yeah. Well, and look what happened to him. It's true. He needs an earpiece because he can't. He doesn't even remember where he is. Pours orange juice in his cereal. Now, before we go to uh, Amber Heard, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Put orange juice in your cereal. Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Ooh. And I've had to use water, but that had nothing to do with confusion. No, I just didn't have no milk. This and Captain, you ever had Captain Crunch dry? Well, it's not dry if there's water. No, but I mean, if you if you haven't if you don't use water, if you don't use water, that's why you got to use water. Yeah, yeah it tears no. my mouth point. up. Right. Yeah, it's it's like sandpaper. Oh yeah, you might as well be eating bullets. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they still taste good. I don't know if bullets taste. Did you know you can season meat with gunpowder? I don't know. I one day I'd like to find out how bullets taste. I think we all would. Certainly, right now. So. <laughs> like in Nebraska, Springfield, Missouri. Well, you this cried weekend, my funeral. <laughs> I don't want to be weird. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you're sitting there crying. If you know Dave tastes a tastes a 380, and we're sitting there at his funeral, and if we start crying, Amber goes, "That's weird." Yeah, I remember when I was crying uh, at every funeral. I always had like an uncle come up to me and is like, "Stop being so weird. Stop being weird. This is ridiculous. Come on now. You're a, you're a man. You're carrying the family name. You're, you're a step uncle. The principle's the same." Yeah. When my son's grandfather died, he's like four. I was like, "Listen, stop being weird." Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, you know what? He'll grow up to be a better man. Well, yeah. You have to make sure you bottle it up. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's it. Bottle it up and don't let your wife know. That's what I do. Yep. That's what men Lesson do. learned, <laughs> ladies. You've made us this way. The Amber Herds of the world. Boy, boy, and it's so, and it's one, isn't it wonderful that this was the ambassador for the Me Too movement? Yeah. There you go. We said chickens would come home to roost. Here we are. Now, speaking of chickens coming home to roost, I don't know if you remember this. We're going to talk about uh, Biden's recent comments about all of you being extremists. So I'll try and get through this relatively quickly so we can get to Amber Heard. Guys in the control room, let me know what she's doing, how she's lying, uh, how bad her acting is. Hopefully she gets a Razzie. But Joe, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden now is referring to all of you as extremists for simply holding a view that the majority of Americans hold. That being said, this is the playbook from the left, right? They always play themselves up to be Captain Unity. They call for civility when they feel as though they're the ones being under attack. And then that goes out the window once they don't get their way. Like children or Amber Heard or feminists. But I repeat myself. Here we go back to uh, Captain Unity with uh, the most votes ever of any president. Wildly popular. 81 million. Let's see. For all those of you who voted for President Trump, I understand the disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple of times myself, but now let's give each other a chance. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies. They are Americans. They are Americans. Well, well, that's nice. It seems like he really does want what's good for the whole country. Well, yeah, no, right. I can definitely see where the uh, 81 million votes came from. But yeah. um, also, you have to remember, he's a, a complete piece of shit who calls his opponents political extremists. Oh, so it's a yin and yang. Right. Yep. For example, uh, it's one of those things. He's weird. Both things can be true. Or in this case, one is a lie and one is true. True. Right. Who's on first? Not him. He doesn't know what first is. He can't count to one. <laughs> so here's an example of what he just said about Republicans. Uh, I believe this was yesterday, you know, to not vilify your opponents. They're Americans. This is about a lot more than abortion. The idea that somehow there is an inherent right that there is no right of privacy, that there is no right. And remember the debate we had, you don't remember, but we had a debate about you don't remember. Uh, <laughs> Griswold versus Connecticut. There had been a law saying a married couple could not purchase birth control in the privacy of their own bedroom and use it. Well, that got struck down. Griswold was thought to be a bad decision by Bork, and I'm, my guess is the guy's on the Supreme Court now. What happens if you have a uh, state ch changes the law saying that 
that, that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children. Is that, is that legit under the way the, the decision is written? What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history. There it is. Oh. In recent American history. Come, Come on, on Joe. There's good people on both sides. You would think so. MAGA, what he means is, uh, you know, the half that uh, voted, uh, you know, fewer votes in the most free and fair election of all time, who voted for Donald Trump. I guess they didn't learn from the basket of deplorables. What uh, LGBTQ kids won't be able to be in uh, schools? No, no, no. Just public school teachers. But I don't understand. Even the woman behind him is like, is this, oh, God. Yeah, is this, this is, this is the leader of the free world? Is this really what we're doing? Uh, for crying out loud. Can we please just audit the voting machines? No? Okay. Does anyone smell shit? So let me ask you this. While we're talking about extremists on abortion. Look, Roe v. Wade, yeah. you've, we've done a whole segment on this, okay? We did a whole show on this. If you don't know, the gaslighting works on me! Where sometimes I have to go back and go, wait, hold on a second, maybe, 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 maybe I'm missing something. Because No, 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 no. Roe v. Wade being, if it were to be overturned, which it likely will, just means that states can place restrictions on abortions in the first, first trimester, which they can't do right now. And other states can not. It will allow states to do what they want on abortion. I'm going, yeah, okay, that's it. Oh, all right, okay. So you're lying. But there's the lying is, I'm telling you, it works on me sometimes where I have to second guess myself. That's why we make all references available at lottowithcredit.com. You can click the link in the description. So let me ask you this, knowing the policy, what is more extreme? You can take the left, of course, you can take Antifa, you can take Black Lives Matter, and then let's say you take the January 6th insurrectionists. Eh, okay, you know what, the scales of asshole? I would still say they lean heavily in one direction. But let's look at abortion right now. Let's look at the extremism, which he is accusing half the country of being. During the 2020 election, okay, there were only two Democratic candidates, two, who said they supported abortion restrictions after 24 weeks. That's six months. I don't know if we have that number uh, on uh, the uh, earliest born baby now, but I'm pretty sure it's right around that number. It's somewhere between 23 and 25 weeks. The argument of viability or whether it's a life, it doesn't matter to them. Only two Democrat candidates supported abortion restrictions in the, in the third trimester. The fringe with the Democrat is people who don't believe in abortion up until and including birth. There are two out of all Democratic candidates. It was 21 weeks and five days. 21 weeks and five days. Wow. Dang. And they don't believe you should place restrictions after 24 weeks, just to keep that in context, because we're going to come back to it. What about... Uh, uh, HR 370, uh, 3755, which was, uh, I think it was introduced last year by Judy Chu. I don't chew, Bless chew, you. choose you. Mm. It would allow abortion up until birth. Let me show you what the bill would have been. Again, while we're talking about extremists, a, a prohibition on abortion after feel, fetal viability when, in the good faith medical judgment of the treating healthcare provider, continuation of the pregnancy would pose a risk to the pregnant patient's life or health. What this bill is saying is there should be no allowance for restrictions on abortions even after viability. Acknowledging viability, you still can't place any restrictions on it. Up until birth. I think that's pretty extreme. I think it's more extreme than a heartbeat bill. That's my opinion. I would love to hear the opinion of you if you're, particularly those who are pro-abortion. Because I think Dave has a very reasoned view on it. I don't agree with Dave and I don't agree on it, but Dave and I both agree that up until and including nine months is extreme. That's the entire Democratic Party except for two people. Seems a bit much. Here's something else uh, that uh, is pretty funny from the same bill. This is what they wrote. They can't trip over their own fake dicks. The terms women and wimp, woman and women are used in this bill to reflect the identity of the majority of people targeted and affected by restrictions on abortion services and to address squarely the targeted restrictions on abortion, which are rooted in misogyny. However, access to abortion services is critical to the health of every person capable of becoming pregnant. So women? Women. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that goes? Don't be obtuse, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry. Men and women. Yes. Anyone who can get... Hey, did we get a fact check on this? As far as I know, no man has been has become pregnant and given birth. I don't know if there's a sixth-day science experiment. Uh, I, ha I don't know if you've seen the cartoon... 
picture on your phone? I, well, you know, okay, Arnold doesn't count. And by the way, Danny DeVito was a horribly absent father. Yeah, he really was. Yeah, see that? That's what we put out there. They have to put That's this just me in a after bill. I drink something bubbly. Yes. <laughs> they just they have to put in the bill health of every person capable of becoming pregnant. So on one side, you have people saying, "Yeah, the MAGA extremists. All right, give it over to the states." And on the other side, you have all Democrats except for two saying abortion up until nine months and including birth for not just women but any pregnant persons. Holy shit. Really? You don't get to use the extremist card anymore. You don't even get to use it for the militiamen who are living in the woods eating tree bark. It's still not as extreme. It's not even close. Well, you can't win. You can't not even not only can you not win, I shouldn't say that. You can't have a conversation because you hit a dead end anywhere you go. It's like, well, what about the men that can get pregnant? It's like, well, are we, are we, was that in Roe v. Wade? <laughs> Did they bring that up in court? Well, what about, uh, Wade is a guy's name? Yeah, huh? What if there was a what? Wade who got pregnant? Is there a Wade who got pregnant? I'm just saying, what if? Well, oh. I mean, Wade sounds like, Wade does definitely not sound like the name of a man who gets pregnant. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. The only less pregnant <laughs> male name would be Wyatt. Yes, yeah, that's not, yeah, there's, it's too manly. No. It's uh, a Skyler. A Skyler might Skyler get, might get pregnant. Pregnant man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You'd be like, ah, it's, I'm not surprised. Maybe like a gunner. Yeah, a gunner. possibly. Unless he's like from Sweden. But the point is, you know, there are girly names. Don't use girly names. So Carol. He, uh, Carol he's, now, not in the seventies. Is there a now. Carol for men? Oh, Carol O'Connor. Oh, that's right. It used to be an Irish name for men. Yeah. Okay. Now, not so much. No, no, I can't imagine. I mean, if whoever, if you name your kid Carol, you might as well name them. Please kick my ass. Now yeah. he cites. Griswold versus Connecticut, right? That's what led to kind of Supreme Court Roe v. Wade. Uh, a lot of people have cited this. We have the re references available. Look, he mentions the privacy issue of the con Constitution. First, let me clarify this. There is no right to privacy in the Constitution. Okay? Let's just be clear about that. Now, that's not saying that you do not have the right to privacy in certain instances. That's not what I'm arguing. But for them to say abortion is a constitutional right because privacy is a constitutional right when neither one of them are. Here's the thing. It's not a privacy issue when they want to, when you look at the bills that they propose. So in other words, right now they're saying it's bad law, the privacy argument, so that states cannot regulate abortion, right? That's the argument from the right. For the left to say, well, the privacy issue makes abortion a constitutional right, and by the way, we acknowledge viability, like the bill I just told you about from Ms. Chu, and you should still be able to kill them anyway. Look, you don't have the right... Okay, let me give you an example of right to privacy. You have the right, uh, there's patient-doctor confidentiality, right? Same thing with lawyer-client confidentiality. Of course, that goes out the window if, uh, you know, you have someone who wants to take, if Amber Heard wants to take half your stuff. Then you have to be filleted open for the world to see, as we're seeing right now. But that goes both ways. There's an instance where you have the right to privacy. The Constitution doesn't have a broad, overreaching right to privacy. That being said, you don't have the right to privately murder somebody. Now, I know not everyone is pro-life, and I understand that. However, from their own bill, they have acknowledged that this is a person because they've said no restrictions after viability. I don't think only viability, I don't think viability is a valid argument because a one and a half year old, an eight month old is, is not viable. It's just inside the womb, outside the womb. You're just talking about lo location difference at that point. It's semantics. But they've always argued viability. And now they have said, even at the point of viability, you have the right to terminate it. You don't have the right to privately commit murder. I do believe that aborting a six, seven, eight-month baby is murder. But they do. So it doesn't matter what I say. They do. That's a slippery slope. Remember how back in the day I said it was a slippery slope when we were talking about same-sex marriage, when we were talking about the idea that men and women were fundamentally interchangeable? Re regardless of where you lined up on that, I just said it opens the door here that we no longer have the roles of male, female, and society, that really men and women are not, and now here we are, fundamentally interchangeable. When we said, hey, look, hold on a second, you're just talking about people identifying however they want in their... Uh, on their identification, well, what's going to happen with sports? They said, well, no, hold on a second, that's just, uh, that's a, come on, you're just fear -mongering. Well, here we are. If they say you have the right to privacy as it applies to a crime like murder, like theft, where does that go? 
If they had their way, it's a crappy argument. It's an extremist argument. And even worse, your former vice president, most popular former vice president ever, goes into a humanities 101 logical fallacy to make his point. And this one today <laughs> is, uh, is the red herring. You guys can run a search on this afterwards. It's a very common logical fallacy. It's where you bring up something that's largely irrelevant to try and take the argument somewhere where you feel more comfortable, effectively. Biden there is creating red, red herring by saying what? You may not remember this in the clip. He just said, what about LGBTQ children? They could be kicked out of classrooms. Hold on. Wait. Just so I'm clear that I'm understanding this, if states have the right to regulate abortion as they see fit in their state, meaning Texas can have a heartbeat bill and Colorado can have abortion up until birth and including birth period and the federal government doesn't have it under its jurisdiction. If that happens, gay boys won't be allowed in classrooms? Yep. Is there any way to follow this? No. Nope. Look, of course, they're clearly protected under the Equal Protection Clause. What, and, uh, what do they mean, though, by gay, like, gay kids aren't, like, what? Drag, well. Like children? Like, well, you know, they're the ones who put on the children drag shows, so that's nice. But I'm just wondering, he's talking about little kids, right? Yes. Just to be clear. Yes. For everybody listening. Yes. Not teenagers, not, he's talking about little kids. Yeah. The ones so, he likes. Yeah. So the one, there's not really. Like Apple Jacks, he eats he, what he likes. But it's not, uh, are they really gay? Or are they just silly at that age? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, they sometimes are <laughs> just a little feminine. All little kids say gay stuff. They're asexual. Yes. When I was a young kid, uh, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And because I saw that my mom and dad lived together and I roomed with my brother and then I saw teenagers didn't room together anymore. I was like, well, I really like being his roommate. I want to be his roommate forever. So I said, when I grew up, I want to be a, a woman so I can marry Jordan and uh, share the same room forever. Well, yeah, and now they'd be like, well, we're going to make that happen. Right. I mean, my mom, did, my mom did put me on birth control, so she was an early adopter. Well, of course. I've been wearing a, <laughs> wearing the birth control patch since I was six. She told me they were Smarties. <laughs> Fun fact, Smarties, as you know them here in the United States, uh, in Canada, Smarties are just like a generic M&M. &M, really? And what you know as Smarties, a little like kind of sugar tarts, they're yeah. known as Rockets. In Canada? In Canada. It's a silly place. What's wrong with you guys? Well, there's a lot wrong with us. Have you seen our blackface prime minister and the queen and our money? Well, I've seen that, so yes. Have you seen our military? Your, I've seen your gold coins. Yes. That you're yeah. supposed to somehow give to a stripper. Yeah. Loonies and toonies. They're very, Loonies. very, they have to wear diapers. That's true. Toonies are silly. Yeah, they are. That's a, that's a $2 one. We're the, only, we're the only country, Canada, we have the loonie, which is a single dollar coin, and it's because there's a loon, the bird, on the loonie. Yes. That's what they called it. Then they created a $2 coin, which looks like a giant peso, and they said, what do we call it? I know, the toonie. We're a country so silly that our currency is a pun. It also is loony toonie. <laughs> yes, I know. It's... How did that make it through any kind of legislature? Everyone's like, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need to put us back on the map. God save the queen. People think we're nothing more than America's hat. We'll yeah. show them with our plays on words yeah. slash currency. <laughs> it's the toonie standard. This is great here. So, look, LGBT children, going back to Biden, they're clearly protected under the, the Equal Protection Clause. Let me read this from you. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. This has nothing to do with the Due Process Clause. Here's something else that I want to move on to really quickly because uh, Amber Heard isn't on, but there's another person, uh, Olivia Wilde, who is... Newton-John? Olivia Newton-John is... She was, she, was, she was hot. She was quite the dish. Yeah. Am I allowed to say that, or is that toxic masculinity? It's toxic masculinity. Can we all say that Olivia Newton-John was pretty? Uh, I believe you have to use yeah. other terms. And I thought that she was hot as good Sandy, more than bad Sandy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I kind of like bad Sandy. Well, there's a surprise. Bad Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we know, look, this is one thing, too, where he talks about, uh, talks about extremism. The left wants to create an echo chamber, and I want to get... Through this pretty, but you look at Twitter. You look at how they responded on Twitter uh, with Elon Musk. You look at what they're doing on social media, big tech. Um, we know that the left is opposed to hearing any views with they dis with those they disagree with. So here's a poll that we have for you. Nearly one quarter, 24 percent of Democrats said they blocked, unfriended, or stopped following someone on social media after the election because of their political posts on social media. Fewer than one in ten. This means nine percent of Republicans reported doing the same. Look. 
Former Vice President Biden, he wants the Supreme Court to be an echo chamber. He wants the state legislature to be an echo chamber. He wants Twitter to be an echo chamber. They want Spotify to be an echo chamber. When Jen Psaki is saying we want them to do more to get rid of misinformation, who determines misinformation? The Democrats in power. What's crazy to me is when you see those on the left demanding policies and actions that will continue, that can only result in an echo chamber and then bitch about an echo chamber to you and say they need more oversight over big tech companies. This is the problem that we run into. They're extremists. Not really. You're in such an echo chamber that only two members of your party thought that once a baby is viable outside of the womb, you still shouldn't stick forceps in its head. You've been in an echo chamber and you're trying to put everyone else in these same silos and then bitching about it. I don't, someone wants to call me an extremist? Okay, fine. I guess I'm an extremist. Go ahead. Slap that label on me. Put me on your watch list. It's true. It's true. I believe that states have the right to, if I had my way, I think that uh, abortion should largely be outlawed, certainly the way that it's practiced across the country. But you know what? I'll take it going to the states. Guess I'm an extremist. Hit me for treason. How about the rest of you? Hands up. Hands up. Comment. Who's an extremist? Is that you shouldn't kill a, a baby? Yeah. Like a, an out-of-the-womb nine-month? Well, even well, in the womb seven-month. I would say, uh, I would say, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. Okay, well, there you go. Extremist. All of us. It's like a 90s skateboarding advertisement. I just think extreme. You should be able to choose by then. You're not picking a restaurant. Have you seen how wide my pant legs are? Extreme. extreme. At Sears. Yes. Let's go chase tornadoes. Extreme. extreme. The finger of God. This super soaker has two streams. It's extreme. extreme. The bigger those got, the worse they were. Yeah, I know. The, the original Super Soaker? Oh, you could kill someone with that. It spray. lasted forever because it was so concentrated. Yeah. It was like being in a submarine with a leak. It just... Oh, it was great. And yeah. then they just kept adding stuff to it, and you're like, this is stupid. It breaks and it leaks. I don't want a backpack. No, I don't need to carry all this stuff. Yeah. All That's I knew fun. was fun. it was good for me to know who had the backpack Super Soaker because I could hit them first because I knew their dad was rich. Yeah, of course. That's true. <laughs> it was like $200. Yeah, and then steal their... Uh, what was that little... <laughs> A car that my parents would never buy me. Power wheels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would just yeah. look at my friends drive those and never have one. Yeah. Well, you can also just steal them. Or at least the hubcaps. Yeah. Well, that's why my son got a Corvette and a, and a, a Cadillac. Well, there's a Mattel <laughs> ad you won't see. In Detroit, a Power Wheels carjacking. Oh, uh, yeah. The kids. Well, it will happen. Like, what am I? I'm just on cinder blocks. What happened? <laughs> hey, that's kind of smell in here still. It the other day. I was going to say, it, it does... It does stink. It That's does stink. I don't know if it's There's still an odor. You know what? I think that it's going to be time to... Uh, people know that we've had someone pooping in the office, a copycat pooper from Amber Heard, and uh, I think it's time to put on my detective hat and... Uh, oh! Oh! My word. All right. Now, Dave, you've been following us as well. I have been. Okay. We've had someone who's been emulating Amber Heard as a poppy cat, copy cat, poopy cat, pooper. Poopy cat. Here in the office. It began with a mug, then it was on our chair, and now, as you see, clearly under my hat. Which, by the way, we won't get that deposit back. This is a rental. And I had my suspicions in the office, and many of you at Mug Club have had your suspicions and submitted them. Uh, but I believe that we've been wrong all along. Oh? In assuming that the pooper was amongst us. And, dare I say, assuming that the pooper was a copycat. That's foreshadowing. I'm like Steinbeck. Here's the thing. I, of course, first suspected Brendan because he has very little self-control and seems to find these things funny due to a sophomoric sense of humor. But, had to rule that out. The moment that I saw the fecal transplant that we had on Monday was littered with payday bars. And as you well know, Dave... Allergic... To peanuts. Allergic to peanuts. There aren't enough EpiPens in the world. So my suspicions then moved to Maximus. For he had both the opportunity and the motivation. However, realizing that he's a four foot seven Mexican, the volume of the fecal matter was far too much to have been expelled from his orifice. That's very true. And that led me to a very likely suspect. You yourself, Dave! Well. Everybody knows that I've been covering for you for years as you take your bathroom break as we go to YouTube, and it's always more than an enlarged prostate, but often a mud pie. Well, that's true. 
And believe me, it's not solid the way that it's been with, around That's the That's what got you off the hook. I know. There is far too much of a shape to this IBS poop. IBS doesn't It's leave. bordering on polygonal. Yes. There's no uh, rice hold. And then naturally, of course, uh, suspect, uh, because yesterday we had Douglas Murray who was sitting in that very chair. I suspected him. But then I realized that was only my internalized homophobia due to Tokenawan's constant jokes about loose sphincter. I really thought he was the perpetrator. I know. Yeah. No, it, some had, I think some fell out of his pant leg when he got out of his car. But there's one thing that we missed all along, Dave. Yes. And it stood out at me. Go on. Like your faulty shaven mustache, I noticed yes. a hair in this poop itself. Uh, what? No way. Knowing, of course, that this hair, thick and luscious, could not be Dave's. Not capable of growing such a ma mustache. Doesn't have the testosterone capable. Apologies. I, I did. I did. There's only one in this office, and that was Thomas Finnegan. And I searched and found a DNA match. It is Thomas Finnegan's DNA. Mr. Finnegan, do you have something to tell me? It wasn't me. Take a look. Right here. Take a look. Take a look. I did it! You've been crapping in this office the whole time! No, no, it wasn't me. You think it's a funny joke and it's not! You have no proof. Do we have any proof, Tim? Actually, uh, yeah, I think we do. This chemo wig fell off. Oh. My goodness. It was Amber Heard all along. You've been dating Amber Heard? She, she's as innocent as the fallen snow. Damn it! Thomas Finnegan! She has you under her trance! Stop standing up for her! No! No! I love her! I love her! That was far too short of a stinger. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop bringing Amber around the office. I know. She was here. We didn't even know it. Apologies, Finnegan. I was just feeling the slap. Uh, they may have worked together. Maybe he was just bringing it in in a Ziploc. Uh, I will need a towel. <laughs> I didn't realize I, I spilled my whole towel. mug. There's a whole mug spilled on the desk. Yes, a whole mug spilled on the desk. Are we going to uh, Amber Heard now? I think we should go to Amber Heard. Okay, we're going to go to Amber Heard again. The reason that we are discussing this is because it's, it's a study in sociopathic behavior and misandry. We do right now have a problem. This is a rebound to the believe all women. We should believe some women, but everyone deserves their day in court. And right now it's not going very well for Amber Heard. So let's see what she... Oh, look, she decided to dress like the caretaker well, from the orphanage. Well, there's a listen to an accusation. Yes. And then have due process. Yes, exactly. That's with anybody. Right. Unless it's painfully obvious and we're like, we all saw it. Yes, exactly. You know. Like looking at Amber Heard's face, and you're like, mm, guilty. Well, when she it really, what's sad about it is, it's like you're an actress. I know. Like, how do you? How many takes do you do? I know. Who's your coach, <laughs> Bridget Nielsen? Right. It's really not good. Okay, let's see what she's saying right now. Uh, in New York, it's a fashion event, but it's it's just a major red carpet event. Sounds like hell. And you have to be invited, and it's kind of um, a thing. You know, and we were invited that year, and I uh, I had already gone for the previous year or two. Uh, and oh no, we are going to play we a drinking go game. Together. Drinking storms. Oh my god! And at some anytime point there's an objection, the anytime she cries, can I see it? Yeah, sorry about that. And Johnny Here we starts go. asking me Bring it up again. about this woman. Um, anytime she cries, anytime there's an appeal to sexism, anytime a movie is mentioned, or anytime Johnny Depp laughs. Is she promoting a new film? Finish the drink. If she, if Johnny Depp laughs, we have to finish the drink. Yeah. And of course, since Dave is back, uh, uh, since he's been on the wagon for a long time, you'll just have to take a diuretic. That's fine. Yeah. I can drink this uh, tea right here. We'll call it tea. Yes. Yes. Opium tea. Yes. <laughs> I too once fell under the spell of opium. Bet. It's not a drug if it's opium. It's That's not. what I've always. It comes from a leaf. Yeah. Flower. The natural plant, much right, like the coca leaf. Let's see what she says. In my experience with him, it wasn't just one. Uh, so you'd make a point, and then he would go on to a different accusation. Um, but I remember that what started it is this accusation that I had 
been flirting at this event. Uh, we get back to the hotel room, um, and Johnny shoves me and kind of grabs me by the collarbone area, like not really my neck, but top of my neck, uh, top of my above my collarbone, below my neck. Top of your Amish um, scarf. Yes. I, I think at that point when we were still right in the now, room, she's I living with Harrison back. Ford and witness. But yes. I can't. I, I don't really recall um, I, too many specifics. I remember he threw a bottle at me. It missed That's pretty me, specific. but it broke the chandelier. Yes. That's pretty specific. And uh, at some point... That's an I angle remember, of attack. Um, I don't remember specifics, but it ricocheted. You only remember bits and pieces of that I was the most talking violent about, fight I've heard between a married couple uh, so Johnny far. Johnny and I are in a struggle <laughs> in the living room, and he kind of like shoves me down on the sofa, and I get up, and I'm trying to get him off of me, and it's just stronger than me. I don't know how else to describe it. Ridiculous. And at some point, he just <laughs> whacks me in the face. And I had not... At the time, been a, like I didn't. I think that was the first time I was like, "Is this a broken nose?" At the time, I was unsure what that feeling was, um, but I suspected. Kind of like, well, now you're gonna know what it's nose. like to have a broken career. Yes. <laughs> and so. other than that, I was relatively wicked. My nose. Unscathed. Uh, but I remember. Other than that, uh, that's such a okay. Swollen, Talk about red. trying to play coy. I mean, I don't know what. He threw a bottle and it bounced off and it broke the chandelier and he broke my nose. But other than that, I was unscathed, trying to present herself as beautiful and brave while also presenting herself as the victim. I'm sorry, but drink. And just so you can see, that is in fact Cinco de Mayo Cerveza, which is... By the way, you need to go to Dave Chandeliers, where we hang them yes. directly. A well, beer bottle's not going to take down They're the mineral line. spirit bottle proof. Yes. What Mineral spirits. I've heard that mentioned so many times. In the, do you know? Do you know what mineral mineral spirits are? I think you know. I don't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I figured. You know, neither one of us are that cultured. But you did dr consume substances. I thought. Uh, I I can't. Maybe I know. I've I've had it, but I honestly have no idea off the top of my head what it is. Is it like Angostura bitters? Can someone bring that up? What mineral yeah, spirits? Uh, I know you can light a fire with it. Tur turpentine, turpentine substitute, and petroleum spirits. <laughs> I'm sorry, so it's gasoline? And they were drinking it? That's a nice Is mixer. That correct? Yes, I will have the gas, I will have the uh, 87 octane old fashioned. Yes, what kind of hotel rooms do you have? I'm going to need <laughs> huffing rags and a chandelier. Yes, and don't forget my. for throwing. Don't forget our two diesel martini lunch. Yes, it's just fine. <laughs> All right, let's see what she's saying here. Were you filming those in New York? Okay, and where was Mr. Depp at that time? Johnny was in LA at the time Indoors, and then eventually sunglasses. went on location for his movie Black Mass in Boston. He was at Hot Topic so looking at the, ra Mr. the rack of bracelets saying I'll have all of them. At some point eventually <laughs> in by May. No need for the receipt. I'm walking out with That's him. It. All right. And what if any I will not discussions be returning to a what did you have with Mr. Depp relating to James Franco in that time frame of May 2014? <sighs> oh my god. That's a lie by face. Drink. Yeah. Because she has to think about her answer. It's a nightmare. Um, well, if it's a nightmare, say it. I w wanted to do this independent film. I. God! Movie mentioned. I liked the story. <laughs> I liked the character. I. Was the character a raging away, bitch? <laughs> it was. They saw, saw a lot of me in that character. Yes. <laughs> hey, Luna, can I have a beer? Guys, you guys are in charge of her. We have no idea what's going on. Okay, another side. He's not even He's playing the drinking here. game. He just wants to be drunk. Hurt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I get how much you want. What's the over under on Johnny Depp having a flask in that suit jacket? Oh. I did. <laughs> Hey, by the way, I think there's a. We can probably grab another channel that just has the stream going on. This is a network. There are channels on YouTube that yeah, have it going nice. nonstop, so we don't have to wait for a commercial break. But just that, it's. <gasps> it was a nightmare. Here, let me just show you one thing. If, uh, so, control room, pull up the James Franco clip of them in the elevator. Keep in mind, and this is where the lie gets built upon the lie and the lie and the lie. And Amber Heard had to fire her, or she chose to fire her PR firm. Not a good idea in the middle of a case. Here's a big reason why. When, uh, of course, it was alleged that she had cheated on uh, Johnny Depp with James yeah. Franco, her attorney said they just happened to be in the same elevator together. Well, if you watch the tape, you can clearly see not only do they try and avoid the camera, but they sort of cuddle by putting their heads together. And they only go to the penthouse, which can only be reached by the person who lives in the penthouse or the person has to be with them. James Franco was not getting off at any other floor. So they present an argument 
And then, okay, you see the footage, then they present another argument, well, they were just friends and Johnny Depp was paranoid. And so that becomes more clinical level of gaslighting. It's, well, we just happened to be in the same elevator. Yeah, but you went to the same place. And you, well, you're just being, we're just friends. But you didn't say that you were friends, you said that you happened to be in the same elevator. And the story keeps changing if you haven't been following it since mm. the beginning. So whenever they get that, uh, you guys can bring it up, but let's hear her talking more. Look, she's making the, she's making the face. Slating between yeah, these just, things, and I get up I can't slowly believe a Hollywood again, romance and didn't I work just out. <laughs> resolve to just sit the rest of the time up at the front of the plane. Oh, no. And she's a regular Rosa class. Parks. I, up, <laughs> I got that, uh, that video. <laughs> kind of like, bitch, share. sit in the back of the <laughs> private Learjet <Yeah>. now! <laughs> You're there cuddling in the elevator. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's bring this up. You can bring the music down a little bit. But this is keep in mind, right? They just happened to be in the same elevator was a legal argument. Only one floor is hit, the penthouse. She's in a robe. I believe this is three in the morning. Yeah, her and James Franco don't know each other. Yeah, that's a normal way to... <laughs> that's how you... Yeah. It's good acting on both your parts, yes, by the way. Exactly. He's just well, like, geez, oh, Amber Heard, I didn't know that you were banging Elon Musk. <laughs> oh. So... I, I, if you keep having sex with Elon Musk, I'll never get you a part in my movie. If we go far back into the left, it's like we're not together? Yeah. By the way, when you zoom out, there's just Jay Baruchel masturbating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't want to be a sad sack or a worry wart. All right, let's see what she's lying about now. And I just look at him one more time. <laughs> wanting to penetrate the monster to see the man oh my that I God. love underneath oh, that. You wanted the man to be I penetrated loved. by his monster. Yes. And he tells me to hurry up again. Penetrating the monster. <laughs> and I Who talks my like this? Away from no him. one. I walk away from him. My back is turned to him, and I feel this. Let the record show that uh, her back was, in fact, turned to the monster. In my back. Yes. <laughs> to penetrate it. kicked me in the back. Kicked me in the back. I, I think she's going to cry. fell to the floor. I caught myself on the floor, I'm and I just felt it. like I was looking at the... Floor. Floor of the plane for. Uh, you didn't like feel like you were looking at the floor. You were looking at the floor of the plane. <laughs> I, I thought to myself. Uh, I think I, I think we should, should drink when Johnny's glasses come off. I can't All right. He just, he drink just when Johnny's <laughs> glasses come off. Is that the rules? No, no but, but that's a good no, one. All right. Yeah. Like you could, you could hear a pin drop on that plane. You could feel the tension, but no one did anything. That didn't happen, probably. Yeah. I just I remember feeling so embarrassed. Felt so Nobody on the plane was the like, could you stop kicking your wife? People. All right, hold on a second. And, uh, that's a drink. That's a cry. Also, she's using, by the way, she's using language that she believes she's no one who is kicked in the back on a plane in front of people abused. Their first instinct is embarrassed. What she's trying to emulate is when people say, hey, a lot of rape victims feel shame afterwards, particularly if it's some kind of relationship where maybe things went too far and they feel as though they were guilted and, and they were blaming their outfit or where they, that is true. And it's wrong for people to feel shame about that. But for her to say, I had the shit kicked out of me on an airplane in front of people. And I just felt ashamed and embarrassed. That's not a genuine emotion. She's trying to copy emotions. She it, thinks she should feel. Yeah. And especially during the act of it, that's not how you feel. No, you get mad, you get scared and you get, you're going to get helped. Yes. There's no, I, I don't know who you were on the plane with, but anybody's going to be like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. There's no, I can't imagine. Even the pilot's probably looking back like, I think we should land this. Yeah, I think this is, I don't know if this is certifies as an in-air emergency, but we don't have any marshals on here. Yeah, the, the guy who looks like he's in a band is kicking his wife. <laughs> and he continued to drink and then eventually um, started howling like an animal and passed out in the bathroom. With the door locked. Okay, he's just kind of laughing right uh, there. Yeah, yeah, he just laughed. So hold on a second. The way she told the story is this. He plane laughed. Filled with plane filled. Yeah, he did laugh. Yeah, I, I can't did. finish. Oh, God. <laughs> we need another beer for Steven. I think he mouth started howling. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little too much froth, but aside from that, it's empty, okay? One of the pilots There's is like, too much is fun. somebody howling back there? Yeah, it's just a guy who's just kicked his wife to the ground. He's now howling <laughs> Jack like a Sparrow. wolf. Jack <laughs> Sparrow. Yeah. She wants us to believe that it was yeah. this. It was a... <laughs> she felt embarrassed. Oh! Yeah. This all sounds like it happened. Yeah, this sounds like the flight with Ric Flair. Yeah. This is <laughs> She's confusing it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! 
Woo! Is that a wolf? It's my thing! Woo! <laughs> makes <laughs> makes the flight with Ric Flair the Concorde. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Looks like Pan Am. Yes. Back when you could party in a plane. All right, let's keep listening to her. I, I, how can that call for speculation? I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Oh. Son right. of a bitch. Let's go objection. to Defendants 221. Guys, we need someone to sign. To the, we have like three more drinks here and stood nothing to drink. Dave, what do you want to drink? Do you want to? Oh, I have something down here. I have okay. some extra I can pour in. Now I just drank the foam. My day's ruined. But I mean, at this point, it might as well be pee every time this happens. Yes, exactly. This is him. <laughs> By the way, he also peed on her in the middle of the plane, and no one did anything. He goes, you like it? She likes it. And she's like, why won't anyone do anything? Like, we're not going to do anything. We're not human beings. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's <laughs> Trump peeing on Russian prostitutes yeah, exactly. on the other side of the plane. The left oh, is just nuts. Can, it's like people who are just living their life with no accountability, like the left or like someone like Amber Heard, uh, they just always overreach with a lie. Well, you have Johnny Depp who... Like, he trashed a hotel in the 80s when he was young, which was a party. It wasn't him solo. Right. And then every woman who's ever dated him is like, yeah, he's not abusive. No. Well, it's like, you know what, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, when I've seen him recently, it's like he was 14, he was 15, he did stupid things. He seems like a decent guy now. Yeah. I don't, I really, I don't have any hate for Justin Bieber. I used to think he was a dick. I'm like, what would happen if you were 15 no. and you had $500 million? Well, that was the, uh, who was it? Uh, the guy from Lonely Island and SNL who said it perfectly. He's like, he's 19 years old and has $100 million. I can only imagine the trouble I would get in if I was 19 and had $100. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, you got to give him a little bit of slack for being young. You yeah. can't just be mad at somebody because they're doing the same dumb stuff you are, but have way more access to things. Though he's still wearing the same dumb things, Johnny Depp. Well, he's... well. Uh, I, you know why I think he's a decent man? Because he's very close friends with Alice Cooper, who is a supremely decent man. Well, he knows a lot of comics, and I, I know... Uh, dude, a lot of people know him, and I've never heard bad things about Johnny Depp until now. The only thing that I will say is uh, we were extras in the film The Secret Window, or my dad was. He was very nice... But he faked like he could speak French, and he can't. Yeah, that doesn't make him bad, but I do see that. It makes upsetting. him want to be pretentious a little bit. There, well, yeah, there's always a pretentious. All right. Speaking of pretentious, let's go back to the nun. Have uh, you ever met an actor that wasn't pretentious, though? Like a good actor? Clint Eastwood. Have you met Clint Eastwood? Mm -hmm. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts is awesome. He's a great actor. I've he's done Eric crap, too. but he I was not love, pretentious. I love Eric Roberts. No, was, I've met, yeah, yeah, Eric's cool as hell. Okay, yeah. Patrick Warburton. Too. Patrick, uh, I didn't meet him. Yeah, I did meet Patrick Warburton. I met him too. Yeah. No, but your point stands. Yeah, for yeah. the most part. For the most part. Yeah. Well, Eric Roberts is just cool. He just says yes to everything. Right. He did my friend's movie on Christmas because it was the only day he wasn't working. And he goes, well, what do you want uh, me to pay you? And he goes, I'd, I'd like an omelet. <laughs> and it's all he wanted. It's all he just did it for fun. Did he say, because I can't cook my own omelet? Yeah. Because they took my Tums, Charlie! They took my Tums. They took my Tums, Charlie. We, we should do that as an intro. I can't believe we haven't done a Pope I of actually, Greenwich Village. I did write a Pope of Greenwich Village one that I need to send in, because I, I just, I'm like, I think because we talked about it on air. This? Oh, I don't care. I think care. you and I are the only two people who know that film. Really? I, I Well, Ken does, for sure. Okay. But I, I, I'd like to know, well, Bryce probably does, but there's... There's not a lot of people that know that movie. It's not great, but there are some great performances. I love that movie. I like it. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's also it's there are some, it's there are some plot holes for sure. It, it, it's definitely got a uh, way too long of shots. There's, yes. it, there's a lot of '80s issues with it. Yeah, but I do love that film. You know, it's gonna have issues when they're 80. This sociopath right here, yes. I've heard. Let's see what she has to say. Hey, we need some more beer. Oh, this is a tape of Johnny Depp howling like an animal. What it really means is he was moaning in pain. And hey, by the way, this is a guy who had an opiate addiction because he lost his finger. My point here that we're that I'm making, you guys can listen. This isn't new. The the him Johnny howling. Johnny Depp did. It? I'm sorry. Yeah, he had an opiate addiction. Yeah. Well, I knew that, but what about his finger? Well, yeah, she threw a bottle of vodka at him, a, a oh, handle of vodka. That's, that's what right. severed his that's finger. What happened, severed he had to have finger. surgery, yeah, and then uh, he got uh, mercy. He got staff, which that's right. I didn't realize how severe it was when I got it in my foot two years ago. Um, like you can get you can get sepsis. It's well, really you really can bad. Easily die. From oh yeah, absolutely yeah. Absolutely, you can. Yeah. And. Uh, so he was in pain. Now, remember we always tell people, oh, mental health, oh, addiction health, right? We tell people to get help, and they should. 
Yes. It's, if you have an opiate addiction. But do you think that people are going to be open with their opiate addiction if right now he's being condemned for... Sure, it sounds like he was drunk. He, by the way, he doesn't sound violent. He sounds like, uh in pain. It's, it does sound pathetic. And I'm sure that's embarrassing for Johnny Depp. But do you think that people, men or women, are more likely or less likely to get help if you decide to embarrass them on a public stage in order to try and extort them for money? Well, of course. And I mean, the problem is, is it's still extremely stigmatized. Yeah. And anytime that you can bring in any sort of a legal activity, even if it's legally prescribed, he, he may have obtained it in a different way. And that's the problem is anytime that you can talk about addiction, no matter what it was with him, it right. could be overspending whatever you can find on somebody that they can admit to. You know what? It Here, can let's, be anything. It can be... Because that's a really good point, and I think a lot... And I, I honestly, Dave, I really do appreciate it when you're open about this. Because, you know, we've talked in private. I'm like, I don't want to bring up the addiction stuff. Oh, it's fine. Okay. And I think that you help a lot of people when you discuss this. Well, thank you. Um, and I think we both discussed having mental health issues in the past. Big we time. both have. Because yeah. I don't want it to only come up when it's political football. When people say, Usually mental health only comes up when it's a school shooting, and one side wants to say, oh, it's not guns, it's mental health. The right does that. And then the left says, we don't want to stigmatize mental health if some celebrity commits suicide. But then the left uses it against people. The society in general uses it against people. And I think there's a difference between um, judgment, which is a good thing, and stigmatizing and shame. In other words, we all need to make judgments. You cross the street, you're making a judgment. Sooner or later, you're making a judgment yourself that you have a problem. Right? You, have an, you have a problem with whatever it is, pills, hair. I don't, I don't know what it is. Whatever drug it is, could be alcohol. Sooner or later, you're making a judgment, but someone should be able to make a judgment, bring their judgment to someone else and get help when they bring it to someone who can help them. And then that's used against them. That's when you end up stigmatizing people. And that's what's happening right now. Well, and also, if you have like a court ordered, you know, obviously that is a judgment. But when you actually follow it and you go, OK, this is something that I, I realize I've made a mistake. I want to change my life. They can use that court order against you and you're treated like a criminal instead of an addict. Right. So because sometimes you have to hit rock bottom and rock bottom comes in a lot of different ugly ways. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, I, I have several mental health like issues. Pirates of the Caribbean 4. Yes. Well, yeah. You don't turn. <laughs> well, for that money. Rock bottom. Uh, that's down with Davy's locker. Oh, please. I'll do 30 of those. Yeah. I'll play a waiter. I love how Johnny Depp was like, I hate this character. I'm tired of it. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we're not going to have you in the sixth one. He's like, what? That's my life. Come on. What? I don't want to go back to Benny and June. Let's not be rash. Come on. I I don't even answer Tim Burton's phone calls anymore. We've made a mess together. I mean, how many diagonal shots do you need? This is, please. Are they taking a break? They're on a break. Live stream. What does shortly mean? Do we know what shortly means? They're uh, talking about. Are they taking? They're not taking their lunch break, are they? At eleven thirty. It looks like they might be taking a short recess. Taking a short recess. So you know what? Let's do this. If I don't know if we want to go to. Uh, do you want to take some chats right now on YouTube? This is usually something we do with Mug Club, but let's take chats for about five to ten minutes on the Johnny Depp situation. Amber Heard. If that's what we want to do, you let me know. I, I, again, I'm kind of going through this blind, uh, and then if they come back, we can continue covering it. If you're watching right now, you can usually join lighthousecredit.com slash mug club. We take a few chats every day. Thursday, we take a lot of chats. Um, and, of course, we usually have another segment uh, or another game, something like that. But let's, uh, let's we, uh, we take some. we got another segment, too, if we wanted to go into that. No, I don't think we need to go into the segment. I'd like to take some chats on oh, what yeah. people think about the Amber Heard, uh, Johnny Depp situation. Because I have been very surprised to see the co- I thought it would be maybe a 50-50 split. It's not. No. Uh, well, I'm very surprised. Uh, even at first, I was a little bit surprised by... How many people didn't really believe her? Right. But I, I was not surprised by the number of people that immediately demonized Johnny Depp, took away his career, or at least wanted to. Yeah. Took away, you know, it, it, he just, you have a track record of being in the public spotlight since the early 80s, and this is the first time it's come up. Mm-hmm. I think you should, you know, at least give, a, you know, a little bit of uh, time before you just jump on somebody. Yeah, but that's our that's our society. Yeah, the second you can hurt somebody and the second you can take their career away, there's a lot of people out there that just want to do that. It's it's the inability to achieve something and just immediately try to kill off somebody else. Yeah, no, it was right away jumping on it, and honestly, uh, not like I remember we told some jokes about it, but nothing really serious because we didn't know. Then when the tapes came out of Amber Heard, you know hitting him and talking about hitting him. Yeah. I remember feeling re- like this is just awful, him being railroaded. Because, again, working in the media, you see the groundswell and how much of a trend it was that Johnny Depp was abusive. It wasn't really in our wheelhouse, so we didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I was aware 
of just it was sort of this gold mine. It was like a witch hunt of how many people could just, you know, get some kind of a scoop on Johnny Depp. And I remember thinking, you're going to have a lot of people who heard that and they're not going to know that she was wailing on him. Well, yeah. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Johnny Depp's own daughter came out and said, you know, he wasn't. She was. Right. And that was ignored because it's like, well, come on, it's his daughter. She's defending him. But I, I think that's important. Yeah. Well, her own psychologist, the one who she hired, by the way, yesterday, who showed incredible gender bias by saying, you know, often the woman being abused just assumed that it was a woman. And it turns out she has never actually given an evaluation or testimony uh at least in the last, I believe, five or ten years that involved a man being abused outside of a same-sex couple. Right. And we know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that women commit domestic abuse against men more than men committed against women, and that's what's reported. And we all know that it's underreported. Now, this is why her own psychologist was arguing, or a clinical psychologist, I believe, was arguing the severity of the injuries are worse because men are more powerful. No one's arguing that, of course. I mean, I've been hit by a woman. Everyone here has been hit by some woman at some point. We talked about that a long time ago. Mother. Yeah, well, you know what? We had it coming. That's, there's, there's an immunity for mother. Grandmother. Yeah, well, I don't know how that happened. She came back from the grave just to womp on you. That yes. is... That is powerfully bad behavior. Every but night. What, um, what we don't discuss is, okay, the severity of injuries are more severe if a man abuses a woman. Got it. Yes. It doesn't change the fact that women try more. And what about in this instance, it's irrelevant because she injured him, injured him by throwing a glass bottle at him. In other words, the injury argument is no longer relevant here because she, if you use a weapon, that's why a gun is a great equalizer. Sure, a man is stronger than a woman, which, by the way, is considered offensive and sexist outside of a legal case we're trying to say well sure she hit him but she can't hurt him she's just a look at this little poor little girl johnny depp is you know he's this brooding epitome of masculinity well yes he's an all man <laughs> yes he was out doing black mass which nobody bought him as the lead character. right him and his his turtle dove like brittle chest <laughs> <laughs> throwing overhand rights at Amber Heard. And this is where we are. This is the, these are the arguments. Her own psychologist said, yes, she hit him. But the question became, is it reactive violence? And I think it was Johnny Depp's attorney saying, okay, so she throws a someone who's defending themselves. Do they typically throw a bottle at someone's face? She said, well, it could be reactive. Okay. He said, if they miss, do they typically throw a second one? Well, it would depend on the context. And then in any context where the allegation was that Johnny Depp got physical with her, it was abuse. I don't know. I don't really think that a bottle of mineral spirits is a great weapon for self-defense. But I don't even really know what mineral spirits is. It's uh, apparently turpentine. Right. And with the amount that he smokes, not a good idea. Not a, I mean, not a good idea to drink turpentine in general. That's what I've always said. Yeah. I mean, it's safe. It's a safe stance. Yeah, I agree. But you know what? We don't need to be edgy all the time. Let's grab some chats and see what people are saying here about uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Okay, John Johnston wants to know, uh, do you think Johnny Depp gets more opportunities in Hollywood post-trial or less? Absolutely more. I absolutely think that he gets more. I don't know how many more, but I absolutely think that he's in a better position after this trial than he was before this trial. Because all that, it, whether he wins the defamation or not, and I talked about this with uh, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond in last Ash Wednesday, you know, he needs to prove that she knowingly lied and that it did damages to him. Uh, that's kind of a tough hurdle to clear. Whether he wins that or not, he's already won. Well, and the people that are going to go see his movies, uh, you know, they weren't going to go see him anyway. The people that will always hold on. That, that's the problem with, with now is if you get accused of something, you're going to be guilty to a certain number of people in the public. Right. Because they won't let it go. And they will just assume that you're always the abuser because that allows them to always continue playing that victim card and have that narrative. So, but I think he's going to have way more opportunities because they hated him anyway. But people do like Johnny Depp. It's why he's been successful for so long. He's good at what he does. And there's no reason why you wouldn't want to have a bankable star back. And he was kind of aging out a little bit. Yeah. So this puts him back into the spotlight, so I think he will actually get more opportunities as well. Well, they said that uh, he had to take a lot of crappy films because of some of the financial burdens that he had. Yes. And this was just because of a liquidity issue, so that's why he did a few. What was that movie the, with the artificial intelligence thing where you download your brain? Uh, Transcendence. Transcendence, yeah. Oh, God. Just, yeah. Oh, God, it was terrible. But he had to do those, and so it was like Pirates of the Caribbean and crap. But since then, he hasn't really done anything since the Amber Heard allegations. No, he's, he's done well, he very, very been able to, no. yeah. He hasn't been able to. So I don't see how it could get any worse. And certainly, at, I think at, at the worst 
in the worst case scenario for Johnny Depp going forward now, it's, all right, this was an unhealthy, this was a toxic relationship from both sides, right? That's at best that Amber Heard can argue. And I think a lot of people are it's going to understand that he had to a degree. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think it was toxic. I think he was probably angry. I think he was probably temperamental. And I don't see any evidence that he physically abused her. I don't either. And uh, I think that if anybody's being honest, we've all in our life been in an argument where you lose control, you're pissed off, your of emotions get the better of you. And people want to act like they've never been in a situation. Now, yeah, obviously throwing bottles, hitting, you know, t ripping off part of somebody's finger. You know, there's there's extents that we all don't cross. But right. we've all been in that moment where, whether it's with anybody, even where you just turn red and you do something regrettable. Yeah. Which I'm willing to, of course, look at her. It's a very forgivable thing. Right. But it seems that this is sort of her her usual well, she agreed to terms. Here's the problem is there's a difference between, you know, explosive anger that happens. Like you said, it happens probably in every relationship at some point where both the woman and the man, they get mad, they lose control. And that's that's a bad thing. Shouldn't yes. happen. But it does happen. It's a part of life. It's realistic if you're in a relationship. Right. There's a difference between that and then proactively settling, which she did. She got seven million dollars, Amber Heard. And then after that, and signing a non-disclosure to settle so that you keep it private for his children, yes. right? That was a big reason for it. She got more money than she'd ever earned at that point, up um, as far as I understood it. Although her work in Never Back Down was... I was going to say, uh, I can't believe she hasn't made more. Yes. Just from what I'm seeing, yeah. great. She's a Daniel Day-Lewis. Yes. Actually, she's probably hamming it up about like Daniel Day-Lewis. This yeah. is about as believable as Daniel Day-Lewis doing my left foot yeah. <laughs> on the stand. Her um, playing human is really great. Yeah, yeah. She uh, agreed, settled. And then when Aquaman was coming out, had someone ghostwrite and signed off on being a victim of abuse, capitalizing on the Me Too trend, and then told him, well, you go ahead and go out and say, this is what's a recorded, a recorded phone call, you go out and tell them that you're a man, a victim of domestic abuse. You tell the world, Johnny, see who they believe. That's not uh, reactive anger. That is proactive abuse. That is proactive ma manipulation, regardless of the fights. If we can all agree that the fights are a tit for tat. And I don't know that that's the case. Let's assume the fights are a tit that for tat. That phone call tells you that it's not, though. That's right. the problem. But I, and I agree. But let's say the fights yeah, are yeah, tit no, for tat. Yeah, no, I get it. I get the hypothetical. But I agree. No, it's yeah. not even tit for tat. But let's right. even say if it was she's mad and he's mad. Well, since then, it's not. He tried to settle. He didn't go after her. He didn't drag her name through the mud. He wanted to keep it private. He gave her money that she wouldn't be entitled to anyway. And then she went forward and she decided to try and be destructive to get her name over the top. Two very, very different approaches. And it would be unrealistic to, and I'm not saying it's impossible, to believe that she was the angel she portrays herself to be in that marriage. He was a monster. And then after the marriage, him be the silent, non-confrontational one and her to be on the attack, on the attack, on the attack. There's usually a pattern of behavior, and that was recognized by both psychologists. What really just comes into question is, was Johnny Depp as abusive as Amber Heard? Her own lawyers aren't saying that she wasn't. They cannot claim she wasn't abusive. They're just saying, well, maybe she was abused more. Well, then it's a wash as far as I'm concerned. Well, and whatever happened, he settled with the fact and knowing that he was the person who was going to be looked at like garbage for the rest of his life with that non-disclosure and that she was going to be able to do movies. I mean, he was his career was ruined by it to yeah. a degree. There's no doubt about it. Well, I think they, they settled before she came out and did that. Well, yeah. Oh, did yeah, they really? I think they settled. It was like, all right, look, we just both get divorced. Here's the money, and we just go on our merry way. And she said, okay, took the money, said she would give it to charity, and then she wrote the op-ed. So she made the accusations. Okay, the charity thing, but I thought she had mentioned, okay. She might have mentioned it, wrong? but then she okay. wrote the op-ed, which is what get him, got him fired. That I knew. After yeah. she took the money. Okay. And it's like, well, you can't do, though. You took, you took the money so that you wouldn't keep going forward and try and use this to advance your career. And I think that's what rubs people the wrong way, because they saw it play out in the public eye, and the timing is just... Too convenient for her. Well, you wanted your cake and to eat it too, and then to eat some more. Yes, and uh, she's looking like she's eating a little bit more cake. Maybe it's just some, some stress eating. Well, it could be the the frumpy gown. Yes. Well, she wants everyone to know that she's just like you. Yeah. I also have no taste. Yes. She's just like you, dressed like a nun. Yeah. Except when she's getting into an elevator and sweats, getting ready to get railed by Franco. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's more screen time than he's gotten in a while, too. Yeah, you don't see a lot of them. Well, no. that's what happens when you're on the set of Paulo Elto texting your your parts to yes. underagers. Did which do I that? don't think he ever got in trouble for that. 
well, I don't know. He's just he's he's just a pretentious prick. Remember he got his honorary degree from Columbia, and he's like, yeah, I wrote 19 fiction. Have you tried reading any of his books? No. It's unbelievably bad. Yeah, I would. <laughs> it's like his. He, everyone talks as though he's this genius who's hyperly focused and he's hyperly productive. Read any of his crap. You'll be like, oh yeah, this professor just wanted to be able to say he had James Franco in a class. Well, yeah, they also go. He, you know, he's like the next James Dean because he, you know, when play he's James younger, Dean once. Play, yeah. Because it's like, yeah, because he looks like him in a red jacket. Yes. Exactly. Also, I nothing against James Dean. We don't really know how that story would have turned out. No, he only did three films. Yeah, he lost his head pretty quickly, literally, mm -hmm. uh, during his Hollywood career. <laughs> <laughs> He did three films, James Dean. Uh, and one was one was very, very good. Can you name the films? One was East of Eden, right? East of Eden. East of Eden, uh, obviously Rebel Without a Cause. And then what was the third? I should know. It was a Western. Uh, wasn't it a Western? G G G Giant. Giant. It was a Western, though, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, it wasn't like a Western, the it was, but it was set in the, in the West. I in think. the West, so yeah. Like on a ranch, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Well... Was it, is that what it was? Is it oil? Okay, I remember it was like a way. I've honestly never seen. I've only seen East of Eden and uh, obviously Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah, Rebel Without a Cause. I never saw a Giant either. Yeah, and East of Eden was okay. Yeah, it's okay. it was alright. He was good in it though. He was good in it, but a he lot of people have praise it. It's because he died, James Dean. So yeah. they want to say that he was the best. I actually think he was better than Marlon Brando, but uh, I don't know how it would have ended up. Probably would have ended up fat and on the crapper. Well, a lot like Marlon Brando. Yes. Who just hated. <laughs> I love Marlon Brando, though. I just like that he hated everything he did. Yeah. It's like, dude, why? You just get to, you get to be an actor that's yeah. great at your job and you're angry at life. And I love how they used to stage the scenes around him afterwards he, so he could just remain seated. Like, people thought it's like, oh, it was for his character. No, he's just like, you, come here. Uh, you, come on. He, uh, what do you, what do you, what do he say? They're like, okay, can you just walk two steps? It's not in my contract. <laughs> there, there was supposed to be like a, a huge fight scene at the end of Apocalypse Now. Yeah. And he showed up like drunk and didn't know his lines, so they just let him do his thing. Yeah. And it ended up being pretty good. That's like Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal got so fat he couldn't do the fight scenes. Mm. They are like, okay, he's going to throw a front kick and you're going to, you know, you're going to sidestep, you're going to block. And he's like, I wouldn't do that. I'm like, what do you think? I would just do this. <laughs> <laughs> so like everyone else was like doing these acrobats and he's just like, well, yeah, on Apocalypse Now, he there was a scene where he's just like into the character, and I don't know if it was because he was great at method or he's just lazy, but he's doing the lines as Colonel Kurtz, and a bug just crawls in his mouth, and he eats it, and he just goes, I ate a bug, and then he just keeps talking. <laughs> <laughs> he also had, uh, there was a uh, Burger King right by his house, he would pay a kid to take all the remaining food at the end of the night, and he would throw it over the fence of Marlon Brando's house, and then he would just like... Is that uh, true? It's true. Grab all the burger. I can say this honestly. Grab all the Burger King and go back. Well, that's just self-punishment at that point. I mean, he has the money. Oh, he was. But yeah, did you see him in Island of Dr. Moreau? No, I did, but I didn't. Okay, look. He wasn't yes, supposed I to wear any of that. I saw, <laughs> I saw him. I didn't make the leap that he had the Burger King boy throw bags of trash <laughs> yeah, into his yard. Over. I assumed that he ate a lot of money. expensive, high-quality food because no. he was rich. No. God. No, this was a, uh, this was a sexy leading man who then played uh, Vito Corleone, and then after was like, oh, I'll just ruin it, my body. Oh, the Burger King in my yard. I just can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting is that? I have, I have, uh, I was, I was looking up Dave's Burger King thing, and I have something. Is this uh, true? Yeah, it it is true. But Holy, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. what a disgust! I don't think. No, no, hold on a second. Can we just stop? I don't think I've ever heard anything more disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I might I might have something to top it. Uh, Johnny oh. Depp, Worlds Collide. Jo oh, we're back to the trial, but really fast. Johnny Depp said that he loved his farts so much he compared uh, them to God, Marlon Brando. Uh, Depp said, my own tear-filled laughter gave up the charade. I reached into my pocket and revealed the culprit. Marlon's face lit up like a Christmas tree, the smile of a five-year-old. I handed the fart unit to him. He held it up to the light and exclaimed, I have found God. I was so proud that after a couple of years of being on the receiving end of Marlon's practical jokes, I was finally able to swing back and connect big time. Wait, is a fart machine? But we were both winners as the fart machine became a source of entertainment for many years. Oh, wow. So they have the sense of humor of like a six-year-old <laughs> boy, and they're both wearing Burger King Kids Club <laughs> crowns. Yeah, that's true. One, well, yeah. One. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Brando, I admire your catalog of work. I celebrate all of it, uh, and I believe that we share common ground uh, over mineral spirits in this flatulence machine yeah yes <laughs> also circumcised the, the in the 60s are, uh, you can keep uh, you can keep all the rings and like get the get the food yes well i appreciate it i uh, i have always had a fondness for your 
Uh, Burger King trash thrown yeah. over your fence. I, uh, you take I, risks. That I is. eat it on all fours. Yeah. It's brave. <laughs> brave choice. Good choice. <laughs> this is why you make the choices. That- <laughs> Even I like Johnny Depp. They are pretentious pricks. They I know. Are. I love both of them. They're, I, I, I can only imagine the director just like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> what, sorry, what were you saying, Token Island? I, I So the trial's coming back, but oh. right now, is, what, is she taking back. her oath? She's taking her oath that she's going to immediately break? <laughs> oh, there's no audio yet? All right. By the way... If anybody wants to throw McDonald's trash over my <laughs> <laughs> when I'm older, I, I'll totally tape a twenty to the front. So many similarities I would wager between me and Dave, though he there are differences that bring us apart. Like he prefers McDonald's. I, uh, I'm, uh, I have a penchant for Whataburger thrown over my. Uh, it's not so much a fence as it is uh, really more of a of a, uh, a steel barrier, but uh, it's a style choice, brave choices. <laughs> I originally wanted uh, Wendy's, but uh, uh, the Frosties would just go everywhere and cause ants. Yes, he had a problem with Frosties. He used to yell at them and accuse them of being nothing more than a thick, glorified milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> and he pooped in the bed. But he did so you with imagine, no malice. You imagine if Marlon Brando pooped in your bed? Oh, my gosh. It's just like <laughs> yeah. sunk in. Yeah. You're like, was there a rhino in here? be like the reverse princess in the pee. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what's happening with Amber Hurt Him. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Try the fish. Yes, yes, I'll be here all week. Did you reach out to... Try the friendship uh, bracelet. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay, and bleeding. Your, your Honor, I would direct Your Honor's attention to the... Ooh, when she has that uh, tablet lighting up in front of her, it's like someone telling a scary story by the campfire. <laughs> present sense impression and uh, uh, and they found the, hanging from the state door of, state of mind a gold digging bitch no I want you to dress like the judge yes <laughs> let me get off yes uh, without the shoulder pads <laughs> everything about this just seems calculated they keep cutting the audio with this thing all right well that's why we're here with you okay you can take yeah, we're trying for you we're giving uh, you we the, the old college try. Fun, but it really is something. Yeah, it really is something to try and keep this alive. You guys can smash the like button if you want more of this. Uh, let's uh, take a chat and uh, see what uh, see what people are saying about this trial. Why is it? What? <laughs> it's a steel tumbler. Is this it? <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. It's like like these actors, we think that they're distinguished and they have these yachts, but he's wearing you know the already pre-assembled suit from J.C. Penney, drinking from a generic steel tumbler that he got at like some kind of a furniture convention. Oh, that's my my favorite was uh, when Hulk Hogan was on. Was, uh, I forgot what the trial was. It was even Gawker about. It was, it was, about it was Gawker son. the sex tape, wasn't it? Or no? It might have been the sex tape. Yeah, it, yeah, might, yeah. it may have been that. Um, but he came in just in his usual, like, sort of wrestling yellow garb, you know? Yeah. And the judge is like, you have to tone it down. So the next day he comes in a black bandana <laughs> and a giant chain. <laughs> just, he, just, like, he just went to NWO era. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just came in as bad Hulk Hogan. And the judge is like, uh, you know, fine, whatever. This is, at least you tried. It didn't help him where every time they asked a question, he went, yeah. What? <laughs> That is the funniest sex tape. Because it's not even a sex tape. It's just a guy talking about how he's full naked in a bed. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, funny. Okay. I Let's, just think I ate too much. I can't perform. Much <laughs> so sad. I know. Oh, Terry. A, uh, it, it, I mean, he made Mr. Nanny. That makes that, makes that movie look... He also made... Uh, uh, was it Thunder... Uh, Thunder oh, th- in Paradise. Thunder in Paradise. And then Suburban Commando with That's Christopher right. Lloyd. I remember Suburban yeah. Commando. I, I thought they're back. Theater. Oh, are they back? All right. Let's hear Let's uh, hear ha- what she has to lie. The communication between you and Rocky Pennington, your best friend, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Objection, hearsay. To not objection. Was there a drink there? And they cut the audio again. How is it hearsay if she was just asked if something was correct? <laughs> That's what I, I don't know. That seems odd. I'm not a lawyer, but I do play one on television, and that yes. seems strange. Amber Heard's like, really? I would like to sit down with you for a nice character study. It's like, you're, if you're playing a lawyer, it's going to be the same thing you always play. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but you do. She shows up in Aquaman with glasses and a law book. 
I didn't even know she was in Aquaman because I've never seen it. Yeah. My son had no interest. I had no interest. I mean, it, 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 you really have to stretch to make the world in danger from sharks. Yeah, I think we we talked about it, but it was like an idea for Entourage because they're like, well, here's a hero where they'll never make a movie about it, so right. we can just have it in this. And then they did. Yeah, I know. And then they made Gatsby as well, which they somehow made worse than the movie Entourage did. Oh, well, you didn't you didn't like Gatsby? You didn't like it with the Jay-Z soundtrack? Oh, yeah. You didn't make sense that people were dancing on a bridge and Model T's to rap music while no one was driving the cars? You know, oh, I was, was wondering a little. <laughs> it seems... <laughs> The only film worse than Great Gatsby that I can think of, well, because the ending was awful. And I love, I, I love Leo in movies, but I was like, yeah, I, it was I bizarre. couldn't wait for him to get shot. Yeah, I went. What was it? Was it? Uh, was it? Is it Puffy now? Is it P Diddy? Is it Sean Combs? What does he go by? Uh, what does he go no by? Idea. Come on, uh, I, I know. I get it that I'm the asshole for not knowing. But di Puffs. didn't he show up in the film? Wasn't he in the club scene, or am I thinking of someone else? Was it Jay? It was Jay Z or it was Puffy? It was one of those really, I've really honestly, rich. Rappers. I only remember Tobey Maguire for a second, and I honestly don't remember any other part of that movie. Joel Edgerton. Was it one of? Uh, was it? I know Outcast was the soundtrack, but I don't I did a lot of the soundtrack, but I don't think it was one of. Them. I don't know. The only thing, and the ending was awful. Spoiler alert: If you didn't see The Great Gatsby, uh, the only ending worst. Uh, worse than that was King Kong, the one that Peter Jackson. Oh, that was terrible. The last line from Jack Black. Yeah. Where he goes. He goes I guess in the end, zoom out, it was the beauty that killed the beast. The beast yeah. <laughs> That's how you're going to yeah. end it? And yeah. Jack Black saying it. They're, they're back to the trial, but uh, Puffy goes by love now. What? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> no, I'm he, not going to do he, it. He legally changed his name to Sean Love Combs. Guess what? I don't give a love. shit. He was Puff Daddy. Then he was P. Diddy. Then he was Diddy. Then he yep. was Puffy. I might be getting the chronicle. Then he was Sean Combs around Monsters Ball because he wanted to be an actor. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now he wants to be love. I'm and not love gonna, is that's feminine. No. I'm not gonna. No. I'm not gonna. It went no, thank Puffy, you. Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, love. <laughs> Diddy, love. How about, they, they how about Silly Prick? <laughs> yes. They've gotten progressively worse. Oh. I want to put him in a prison cell with the Edge from U2. Like, oh, yeah, you, you two fight it out over who gets the shittiest yeah. nickname yeah. that you gave yourself. Yeah, we fight to the death and we kill the winner. Yeah, exactly, like Spartacus. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. She's making uh, she's making her resting angel face. Here, so, <laughs> you wanna, um, did you? What if any communication did you have with your mother or your father following this incident? Objection. Hearsay. Sustain that. Um, <laughs> well, let's go to let's go to defendants two twenty two and just spend the seven yeah, million on I a lawyer. We're going to be back up. Right, you want to approach? That's fine. Thank you. We know she didn't give it to the ACLU. No. And they muted. Why do they keep muting it? It's like, well, this one's not because of an objection. We just find her to be shrill. Oh, Johnny Depp's other lawyer needs to uh, wash her hair. I know. <laughs> this is not a good look. Right now, he's just talking to her. He's like, have you ever considered dry shampoo? Uh, yes. <laughs> You're sitting next to a movie star. Uh, maybe you should sit on the other side of the table, not next to me. Yes. And, I don't, and if I'm saying that, that must be quite severe because yes. uh, it's well known that I don't bathe, but uh, I at least present myself as I do. Yes. I, I've, I've smoked 38 cigarettes outside, and you smell way worse than I do. I don't know how that happens. Didn't you go to... Cornell? Yes. Is that my jacket? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that other guy is sitting there with, it's like, don't sit with your palm that way, you look gay. I know, he's just leaning he's in like, like mm -hmm. this. <laughs> what are we going to say next? So, Johnny, what happened in Donnie Brasco? Mm. I was a little confused. Oh, ooh, we're back. Oh, I think I threw that. Objection! <laughs> Donnie Brasco is a great film. Yeah. I That's like honestly that. my favorite Johnny Depp film. I love Donnie Brasco. I, I like it more than Godfather. I know it's a different kind of film, but I Donnie Brasco is one of my favorite movies in that genre, and I feel yeah. it's overlooked. Oh, I agree. And I'll give you I'll give you two reasons. Michael and Madsen. Mm-hmm. That is an underutilized, fantastic actor yeah, in my book. Is. I love him in movies. He hasn't chatter, you want to go back? Let's go back. Yeah, let's go back. They to throw him in stuff like I see him in B movies yeah. every now and then on like a plane. But every part he's in is great. Yeah, I know. I watch movies on planes. It's like Eric Roberts. I, I can't believe they're allowed on planes. I'm yeah. like, this is some hardcore nudity. 
It's just available to watch on a plane. Yeah, the Watchmen was on a plane. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just. Oh, right. the blue genitals. Are they muting again? Yeah, I don't mean this right. makes it impossible. It's almost yeah. a stop start as a former Vice President Biden's State of the Union address. Yeah, this is how his brain works. Yes. <laughs> and look, even right now, look at her face. Look at her face. It's just like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it in your bed. I didn't. It was just a prank. Here's the difference is if he goes, uh, well, they say, did you do drugs? Yes, I did. They say, did you drink? Yes. Did you break cabinets? Yes, I did break. Uh, I've been in a fight with a cabinet or two in my day. You know, he's sitting there and he's kind of being sorry. Okay, maybe you can say that he's being a little bit arrogant, but he admitted to it. Where she goes, the pooping was a prank. Well, the bottle, it was an accident. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't punch you the right way. When you see a pattern of someone never accepting responsibility, that's what makes it tough. It's really tough to be in a relationship uh, or friendship if you have a mother, a father, a son who can never be wrong. We've all had that person. It's, and I don't mean someone who's hard-headed. I mean someone who can never be wrong and never be responsible for their own mistakes. And that's why I, that's ultimately what I think, if you had to pin it down to one thing, is that Johnny Depp put himself at risk, was willing to expose all of his flaws for the world to see, and accept responsibility for them, and he's just said, I just didn't do this part, which is what she's saying, the abuse. That didn't happen. Did I do drugs? Yes. Did I, was I in and out of rehabilitation and sobriety? Yes. Did I get mad? Yes. Was I depressed sometimes? Yes. All of these things are true. I just didn't physically abuse her. And she's saying, none of these things that I did, which are recorded and on the record, are my fault. Let's go back to her and see. It's a good point. What if anything did I you think that's do? What people no, you're right, you, though. I mean, uh, that, that is a very good point. May, I reached out to friends and family. Hearsay. Asked for support. Objection. Hearsay. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. That woman's a bitch. Sustained. Oh, agreed. What agreed. What did you do for... The legal nomenclature you need not concern yourself with. I... Um, <clears throat> That's why we had gone, gone back to L.A. Johnny was sick um, after having passed out on the plane. So I took her to dinner. Um, we went to Benihana's. What? Um, <laughs> Could there be a more high-profile place? Like uh, the celebrities like, yeah, I want to go somewhere quiet where I can know, relax. Again, where they smile, come to my table and light a fire. Out. Yes. <laughs> I want to share a table with Which eight is, strangers that want to take a photo with me. I feel loved. With eight and strange Asian men with birthday. rage and problems. I, uh, I like when they use the gasoline pee. It's funny. Yes. <laughs> and they make the choo-choo onions. It's almost as funny as the fart machine yes. shared with Brando. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I laugh. He just laughs way too hard at it for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. And by the way, you notice she's saying when they're asking, she's always talking about him. This is something you see. She's obsessed with him. Mm -hmm. A lot of his questioning was about himself. Hers, Johnny was sick. Johnny wanted to do this. And I just, and then Johnny was this way. And I just, and she's always diagnosing him. That's interesting. That's a lot of, uh, it's not even projection. It's, it's just deflection. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it's still here, say, Your Honor. I'm not crying. I'm just gross. <laughs> May we approach you? Is she crying? Is she crying? Do we have to drink? Is that yes. crying or is that just sniffles? Uh, just gross. There's a lot of pollen. <laughs> What's the pollen index? What's the pollen index? I don't want to have to keep drinking it's if there's a bad pollen high. index. It's high this year. It's very high. high. It's okay, so then me. this will stay I put. Up. Killing me. It's not she fair walked. to get me soused when there's a pollen. Lawyer's <laughs> like, may we approach the brand bench? Just comes up, spits on him. Like, Do this <laughs> right. Is he laughing? <laughs> Just goes and sits down. Oh, he's laughing. Shit! <laughs> That's not pollen induced. No. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if he was. Was he laughing? It looked to it's me. Like, I, I have a fart keychain Marlon Brando gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a stress ball, he just yeah, had a yeah. whoopee cushion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't help it. It reminds me of home. Yes, it tickles me pink. <laughs> All right, since no one has an answer, if he was actually laughing, I'll just take one sip. I'm not finishing. Those unattractive lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He had some pretty foxy lures before, too. The guy on the left looks like he's the before picture before someone gets teeth. He looks like the guy that... Like, <laughs> yeah. mouth is closed. Like, <laughs> yeah, like he's, <laughs> he's finally off of alcohol after God knows how many years, yeah. and he can fix the whiskey face. Yes. <laughs> now to 228. 
Your yeah. Honor, we're going to object on hearsay. Son of a bitch! <laughs> First time. Wow. It's sustained every time. I, under, I understand Your Honor's ruling, but I think... The sigh. <gasps> and I wore my best funeral frock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I just stole this from a handsmaid tale. Yes. Or whatever that's called. I don't know. I don't know if it's handmade or hand maiden. Hand's tale, handmaiden. Handmaiden. I watched I've one episode and I was Honest. like, I can't do this. No, I just saw the the costumes and I was like, no, thank that's you. That's enough. Yeah. They're muting it again? People oh will God. hate it, but it's yeah. like Game of Thrones for me. I've never seen it and I never will. And Game I don't, I know people are going to get pissed, but it's like, I don't care about knights and dragons. I don't care. Well, it's uh, knights and drag queens. On Game of Thrones, I don't know. I I feel there's like a lot of pe- there's a lot of penis. There's a lot of gay I just, gay fornication. It, like I could just watch the Sopranos. There's about again. there's about three good episodes in the entire what is it eight nine seasons of Game of Thrones. And people act like it's the greatest show. Yeah, that ever and everything happened. else is just it's just a tease to get to a couple of good episodes, and the yeah. rest of it is so boring. I'm not. I'm just. I I could look at it in the commercial for, for the original one, and I'm like, I'll never watch this show. You know what? Also, too, I think you and I probably share this. You know. Being a comedian, you like you see an interview with George R. Martin, you're like, oh, that guy has no sense of humor. I probably can't read this. Right. Yeah. He, he takes himself so seriously. Like if you go back and you read Tolkien, like you see, like he actually talked about this was designed to be written. It was basically meant to be sort of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, folklore, uh, or he said like, uh, uh, what's the term? Like mythology for the Western Europe that didn't yeah. already exist. And uh, he said it was meant for the simple person, for the layman. And he seemed to have a sense of humor about himself. But George R. Martin is, he has no sense of humor. And it, once someone shows it, I'm like, I, I can't do it. Oh, no. One of the funniest things I've ever seen, too, about the guy was it's on an episode of Family Guy, and it's just George R. Martin. Uh, he's just in his, uh, like, mobility scooter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Brian walks up and goes, are you sitting? And he goes, almost always. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our resident uh, psychology PhD candidate uh, has some commentary if you want to bring him in. All right, okay. We want to bring in our resident uh, PhD candidate. All right, oh, let's Kevin? bring him on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin, you're such a disease. Jack oh, the they're coming back. Oh, okay, hold on. They're coming back. So, tell us. Uh, if there's an objection, what, I swear to God. Jury, what you did then over that night, the next day. I'm going to leaf blow pollen and, all over this room. Is that cousin and, Vinny and talking? At the hotel. What did you do? I cried uh, a lot. I tried to surround myself with my friends and resolve to. Leave him. Let the record show they're all imaginary. I felt, yeah. <laughs> I felt powerless. Our friends are different kinds Nothing of liquor. Nothing I did. <laughs> made I a difference. Friend you mineral, know, on next the plane, friend spirits. I was so careful. Objection. Non-responsive. So she's doing some of the Please things I was talking about out did. there. The start-stop is very indicative of somebody that's lying and kind of fabricating on the spot. So she'll have moments where she talks quite a bit and it's just like you telling a story Mm -hmm. about your life that you're watching the video of in your mind got my penis caught in a revolving door once exactly and that would be a fluid story Mm -hmm. start stop a lot of people behind it too yeah i know real i don't know how to be a gentleman in that do i go first to move the door for the woman or do i let her go first and let the door but the problem is there's no way to be a gentleman when your wiener is stuck between the really it's just screaming no, that's a good point. And I've also noticed there are very few ums, which a lot of people will say, you know, in broadcasting, you're not supposed to say um because it's a word whisker, but it's natural when you're recounting something as opposed to very staccato, articulate, stop, and then this described that way. I notice that's how she's doing it. All right, let's see what she's saying. Half of Mr. Depp. Objection, hearsay. I'm sorry. Agency <laughs> on that <laughs> What? Right, Did you just call it like a slip and name? fall lawyer? <laughs> Like, it's unreal. Well, I think who's object is who's objecting? Are Johnny Depp's lawyers right now objecting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because her lawyer is. Yeah, so they're just making it impossible. So it's good for them to do that, but yeah. it's exhausting for us. <laughs> but everything her lawyer's doing is like it's not helping her. Right. Content is. Can you tell us how did you feel who that this night? Text messages with. Amber, uh, what Johnny's size are your tits? Yes. Objection. What's his name? Mm, overruled. Steven Duders. How would you describe your nipples? Silver dollar? Do they take up most of the breast I, National Geographic? Would they be comparable to an ice cream cone? And if so, which flavor? Yes. No? I'll allow it. I demand it. Hearsay. I'm afraid that's overruled. 
<laughs> Why? Why? Because I'm incredibly out? horny. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now pull those out, or I will have you in contempt. <laughs> And that'll make you pull it out in court jail. Yeah. <laughs> all right, hold on. We got to see this. I'm sorry. I don't. They just, they went back to the mute. Son of a, this is the worst. All right, g give us the, your PhD candidate. Give us your breakdown here. Well, one of the things that you see a lot from her is the believe me face. Right. And there was a lot of that in the early parts of her testimony, especially yesterday, where she's telling a story and she's wanting to look at the jury and she'll kind of go into her narrative and then... Up come the eyebrows. Don't look me in the eyes. It triggers my aggression. It's true. <laughs> I see it as a challenge. <laughs> All the thrones. <laughs> no, but she... Look. I'm half drunk and it's 11 central, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm fine. sorry, Kevin, go ahead. No, Your Johnny analysis is. is far more valuable than anything I can contribute here. <laughs> Johnny's <laughs> all drunk. It's like, you believe me, right? And she looks to the jury, no. and the eyebrows come up, and then she'll go back into the start stop right. thing. And then she's checking in, because, you know, you, you guys believe me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is, it seems like it's, if you're reliving one of your most, and this is something that people get wrong, because a lot of the body language experts you'll see on television, they're like, that person is looking down and to the left, it means they're lying. Often, if someone is actually recounting something traumatic or something that is embarrassing to them, they won't look you in the eye. It doesn't mean that they're lying. It means that they're nervous about it. So someone who looks you in the eye to describe their most traumatic experience of their life. That's a little much. That's yeah. not natural. Yeah. But because they've been told, be, look them in the eye. You know, oh, Daniel son, always look eye. Well, no, not if you were raped. Right. You know. Longer than three seconds. It's getting weird. Yes, it is. Yeah. You ever see guys interact? No one look each other in the eye. No. This is, about, this is a stare down before a fight. And then they'll talk about something they did that was like, you know, terrible. And they'll be like, oh. Yeah. So do you want to have an appetizer? Yes. I hear they have fantastic mineral spirit spinach dip. Yep. <laughs> you think you think they'll find the body? Well, it's buried under bags of Burger King refuse. Bags of old, <laughs> bags of old Burger King kids club friendship bracelets. Yes. And rings, Dakota rings. <laughs> Brent, oh, eight bags of Burger King Skulls. scraps. It's a vest. Oh. It's a vest. Oh, I felt guilty once because when I was poor and I was at a hotel on the road, I took a roll because it clearly had been like, it was like one of those places oh. that would wrap it in foil. Please bend there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I took more than yeah, a roll. Yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah, to, I know, look, yeah, I, know. I took food yeah. off of a take. I took food off of room service trays when I was poor. And I <laughs> Well, every comic too on Earth has been like this. Continental breakfast uh, also goes in my pocket yes, for of dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, looks like I'm having yogurt and a banana at five o'clock. <laughs> and then Life's the other going good. And the other comic walks up and knows exactly what you're doing and just goes, "Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ruined my. You've ruined dinner." <laughs> All right. What is this? A Danish? Oh, it goes in your back pocket. Yeah. I had to go siphon gas. <laughs> They're back up on Amber. <laughs> okay, let's hear Amber <laughs> lie. Depp in the days following the plane, Boston plane incident. Yes, I did. They were two Please youths. Tell the jury about those communications. I heard from him um, directly. I also heard from him through his assistants who were texting for him. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I knew it was going to be hearsay sustained. You're not testify about the text messages with his assistant, but can you tell the jury about your communications with Mr. Depp? Okay. It's kind of confusing because he's texting through them. Objection, but Your I, Honor. I'll sustain the objection. I'll strike that from the record. You'll disregard that testimony. Oh, boy. She's not going to do well with this. The communications you have Mr. Depp, please. I have to pee in a minute. I'm oh, really so am I. We just can't all go pee at once. Token Allen's gone. Oh, did, I've got a piece super bad. Yeah. yeah, just wait for him. Then you is Kevy still? Can in I go there? before right. you, or do you have to go first? All right, you can go, and but then this, I'll go. But they're breaking her pattern, so she's not able to get on a roll. Yeah, no, that's like that's exactly okay. Pat, you did you two talk. I want to hear what she, and then I'll come back. You guys update me on all the lies. Okay, Roger. About my prediction, everything that brought says is bullshit. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> we still got audio and there. I didn't we got audio here. Okay. Right away, and he. Text me again that he understood that I had made my decision to move on and good luck. And Wouldn't I was the transcript help this out? And then continued to um, contact me. 
I spoke to him when I was in New York uh -huh. on the phone, and he said that he was um, ha he had a chip, or that he was going to meetings. Chocolate, he, please. Uh, I think at the time mentioned a sober, uh, a another celebrity that was kind of advising him on sobriety or not advising him but you know start stop start, encouraging stop. him and he was saying well look you know me and this person we're she doesn't know what a sponsor we're is doing, we're even went to a meeting um i've got three days sober four days sober and that was the last time the monster will never come back the monster will never so come she's back she's telling the story to the jury like such mm -hmm. a different that is kind of weird it felt so much worse than it had ever been before it is strange. It's like, Kevin, would you say she's performing for the jury? Definitely. Well, and th the point about ums and uh, the thought linkers that I'm doing right now myself, I think is well made, but we are talking about an actress here who right. has a lot of time in front of camera, has spent their whole time doing interviews. So we might actually be seeing who she is now mm -hmm. without the thought linkers. Like that, she just might be that good. So, right, which makes the start-stop thing so like pronounced. I've seen sure. Never Back Down. You've seen what? I said I've seen Never Back Down. She's not that good. No, yeah, that's a good point. Your emotions and how you felt about all this. Objection, hearsay. <laughs> I, I, well, let's go. I'll lay okay. the foundation, Your Honor. Let's go oh, to that's defendants. That's a drink again. Yeah, thirty-nine. Sure. I came in unarmed. Good gravy. Like, shouldn't she be answering the lawyer and not staring off to the side? I mean, Tim makes Objection a good point. Like, yeah, that it? does look. That's someone asks you a question, you look at them. Yeah, you, you know. start looking at them, and then she just looks off and answers the question. The same as we just the looked lawyer. at each other for that point of conversation. Yeah, as opposed like to me staring at everyone else <laughs> to see what the they thought. You know, it's, yeah. it's it's insane. It's like so, Dave. Um, I I agree with what you say. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm just gonna look <laughs> everywhere else. Is the jury? Are you believing my bullshit? All right, All right. great. <laughs> well, that's we what I assume. Gage Grossgrutz would do that a lot during the trial. <laughs> Who would? Gage Grossgrutz when he was also a domestic was, abuser. And uh, you know, he oh, would, that idiot kind from of answer uh, the question and then look over right and be like, you guys believe me, right? Yeah, yeah, and then turn back. right and then very turn back. Informative. It is very weird. The oh. guy who drove farther than Kyle with a gun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. If they don't get a pattern exactly. here, we'll go to Mug Club and take chat because this is just, this is just, it's just death. Oh, there's a her. pattern. It just sounds like a. They, she can never, they can never answer, which means like that his attorneys are doing off. a good job. But oh, this yeah. This is not, this is why when you watch shows like Boston Legal or The Practice, you realize that it's, it's, it's not like that in real life. It's well, very yeah. tedious. Well, as really Kevin annoying. and Tim have both pointed out, like, she's kind of performing to the jury. Her face always goes to them. Mm -hmm. She's kind of asking it out. She's not really answering the questions. It's more of a performance every yeah. time. And that's why I think she's constantly getting. Hearsay, yeah. hearsay. Also, hearsay. she slept with half of them. Well, of course. It's just James Franco. <laughs> oh, that looks like a cry. Listen, I'm going to give you fair judgment. I always Is that a cry? Want, I'm, willing oh, to, I'm willing to serve my community, sit on the jury. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, God. Embarrassed and sorry. He said he was, and I believed him. And this is a 4% beer. It's basically water. Or <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come back with him. All right, I'm going to go because I don't care. On the condition yeah. that okay. he would Come back, we'll take the chat. <laughs> uphold his promise to do the treatment, to do the full detox, clean up, and never go back. Again, she's talking about Johnny, so what Johnny needed to go to rehab. To oh, Johnny didn't do the June detox. Johnny didn't August do this. What about you, Amber? What about you? That's, the, that's what I think people are picking up on. I don't know. You guys can comment below. And I would love to see your comments because a lot, it is interesting to see this dynamic of specifically women, specifically women who've been abused, but across the board, uh, not by it. And I think the big reason that people are turned off is Johnny Depp did answer questions about himself, about his inner demons, about his flaws. And she is focused on questions about him, about his flaws. And for the same reason that people don't like a tattletale. It's like, okay, but what about you? And she hasn't gotten to that. She just want to talk about that. This doctor is going to be the solution, the, the cure, you know, uh, 
and he got he got brought on board and all of a sudden Doctor was Robert the plan Smith. was that this team would be involved in Johnny's recovery. So it felt real, it felt serious, I felt like protected. You know, I had already by this point heard a million times, it seems like, uh, promises to get clean and sober, but this felt like a change. And uh, they were going to come to Boston and start working with Johnny, and the plan was to keep Johnny on, a, on the same level of drugs that he was on since he was filming. They needed him to finish yeah, filming the mm -hmm. movie, uh, so he was oh, going yeah. to be maintained with his um, prescri with prescription pills, including the painkillers. And the 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 plan was he would obviously abstain from alcohol completely and all other drugs like weed and coke. And then when he finished for someone, filming, here's also something for someone who's so concerned about, and I would say obsessed with Johnny Depp's substance abuse issues. It really is weird that she was going, cause they were only married for, was it a year, a little more than a year? It wasn't a very long amount of time. Maybe it was 15 sure. months. At most it was 15 months. You know, yesterday she talked about three separate instances when she was doing drugs with Johnny Depp, MDMA, when they went to this trailer park. Uh, MDMA on the plane. So for someone who's like, I just really want him to get off drugs and get sober. But you were doing drugs with him. So when did you start taking it seriously? Hmm. Right. Yeah. 15 months. 15 months. You're right. Without saying what the communications were. And if that's the case, does she take responsibility for enabling him? Uh, where Johnny was, I just would come for short periods of time uh, in between... I mean, on weekends from filming until I wrapped my movie, which I did. Bitch. Oh, sure. I think in May. Whoever wrote this drinking game needs hey. to be on temporary leave. <laughs> well, they nailed it. <laughs> it's a good the game. Was hey, but they're going to kill me. Boston, Debbie Lloyd. At and least every time she does Believe Me Face out. isn't in the drinking game, there would just be alcohol. Pills. Yes, exactly. Just I'll be in the hospital. Medications, which they shared with me, told me about. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. <laughs> But we, we have to be careful about what other people told you. Okay, so you can testify to what <laughs> yes, you know. Yes, uh, please refrain from, <laughs> so see, we're in a courtroom, so being a there? gossipy high school bitch doesn't quite apply here. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't meet the minimum threshold for the court. I know the amount that Johnny told them he was on was so that they, they could maintain him for the filming meaning not cha make a drastic change in the amount that wasn't a of painkillers specific he was reference. taking. No, and it wasn't her film. It was his film. He we just have a movie mentioned. His behavior, his whole personality changed drastically. He would be Did it change when you gave him MDMA twice? Mm. Time I was staying in Boston with him, ha having wrapped my movie, and he would, mm. in mid mid sentence. He just, she just said, my would, movie. One time he I was sitting chuckled. across from him and I'm not going to give that a well, the good, No, the good thing is I can finish So someone else needs to bring me a drink <laughs> because this is almost done So it's a perfect time for me to have to Completely what appeared to be asleep While talking to me and he had a cigarette in his hand And you know Johnny constantly smoked And he just Obsessed with him cigarette, Johnny you know, smoked, Johnny asleep. this, Johnny that See like this is probably true Yeah Because there's no break in the pattern And it sounds like an episodic memory mm. Um and, and he smells like Virginia Slims. Understand <laughs> it. He definitely looks like he smells you know, like Virginia I had Slims. Yes. With drug use um, in my family, can I can you imagine I hadn't being Johnny Depp's acupuncturist? Trying to figure out with the nurses and doctors. Or as masseuse, where you're like, oh, can you just shower? Yeah. <laughs> change and what medications were causing it hazmat suit <laughs> i knew there were yes. new medications involved so you know i was constantly um worried and in communication and johnny's behavior got worse and worse more, johnny 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 uh, johnny 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 off, johnny johnny off, waking up in the middle of the night screaming waking up in the middle of the night sometimes crying and the emotions would change from one to the next like by the by the second he would, the I, I remember like we were, you on the stand uh, right now yes when he was filming in Boston like, I'm not saying we there's not like, both narcissists but like a resort he's better at it. retreat yeah. hotel and yeah. 
you know. I mean, it's pretty tough to argue that the man is not a narcissist who wears more Super Bowl rings than the Chicago Bears. <laughs> I really didn't know. Um, I felt so bad for him, and I, I thought maybe it was just what Kipper had introduced into the regime, the medications. But you just see him reach I down and bite a piece of in, candy in off his bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> like this has all been one big giant commercial right. for Ring Pop. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> big Thank Ring you. Pop. Just stop, stop. The fun don't stop. Ring yes. Pop. I also have a Cheerio necklace to pass yes. on if I want candy or something healthy. When he started Shows his the, edible the panties. process with the doctors. <laughs> so how is he getting away few, with sunglasses you know, inside? I, He's not. We were saying <laughs> They've got to be transition lenses or something. Like, over, well, actually, they're not because they're dark and yeah. yeah. <laughs> He just laughed. Shit, I'm not finishing. Uh, this is a new drink. I'm not finishing this drink. I'm not finishing this drink. I, I didn't expect him to laugh this much. I'm kind not of luck. finishing just this take a drink. Just take a sip. Yeah, sip is fine. Two sips. So that he fine. could get extra high before he had a detox. Casey, hope you enjoyed your trial run. But that, I can't, <laughs> this is worse than the Biden I was one. So, it was such an agonizing <laughs> few that weeks, months. It was so agonizing. I don't know how long it That's lasted. That's something that seems very so fake. Mm. When someone says, days, weeks, months, yeah. eons. <laughs> it mm. seemed endless. It was so agonizing. Was it? No, no not really. <laughs> if something was agonizing for months, you'd surely notice. <laughs> when something that was happening yesterday in her testimony, she was bouncing around between tenses. Wait, she was bouncing? Can we get? Do we have a? Do we have a get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So jump up and down, or again, I will. But it would be have like, you in contempt. <laughs> objection overruled. What were you saying there? No, it, was, it would be like he slapped, but then. Slap, and there was this change of tense in when the verbs were happening. Mm, and yeah. that's also indicative of fabrication as opposed to just, yeah, he went outside and then he did this and then he did that or something like that. Right. Now, you have a, so you have a master's in psychology, is that it? And then you're a PhD candidate? Yes. Okay. Yes, finishing the dissertation as we speak. Okay. So we'll probably need to find his replacement because he's going to go <laughs> psychoanalyze people. <laughs> Otherwise, that's just wasted talent here. He practiced on me. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, urinating on you. That's not a part of... <laughs> I know. I was like, are you sure you're a, a doctor? He goes, no, I'm not a doctor. Right. You're yeah. like, you told me this was immersion therapy. And he goes, no, I did. Yeah. And I said, I, I don't just... self-describe as a psychologist. Yeah, <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> he said, it's urine therapy. That's right. That doesn't make sense. It just right. doesn't take it. <laughs> well, that's right. a great... I love how the camera behind Johnny just moved up to the cleavage behind him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It, just, it literally just... Oh, it's zipping. Tilted... <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> it in the head. There's some guy right now who's like, "There's no, there's no way C-SPAN's on my camera." Yeah. <laughs> like the director's like, "Camera two, stop with the tits. Camera two, stop. I'll never stop." Well, seriously, I, we're not telling you again. Go a little closer next time. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit closer <laughs> now. A little bit closer now. Let's see them titties now. Let's see some of the titties now. Just right. all perverts on camera. You just see breasts. Uh, she, uh, she noticed. All right. Her boobs are huge. Can testify about this. Can you please describe for the jury? Well, what there's that compilation of him and her interacting that I sent. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's when, when there's the next break, we'll watch that and then take chat at Mug Club. The first few days, okay peaceful I the, the nurse uh, and then later nurse and doctor were staying on a different part of the island um, tell us more about the nurse a few minutes the drive uh, by oh, ATV like nurse. 10 15 minutes it was a guy yeah, uh, Ew, by uh, one of those ATV the doctor vehicles. was a girl but we communicated You're via lucky to be alive. <laughs> occasionally through text and um, lucky you don't have a just, hand for a leg like <laughs> and then the behavior then it just really wasn't okay uh, it was up, down, he'd be mad at me, um, then he was wanting a hug, uh, he cried a lot, and then he, um, which is weird, which is weird, you know, yeah, wanted to have sex weird. a lot, like, which is, what? Just oh, what, like someone would, who's married to and this would want to have sex often, that's insane, that's, that's unheard of, that's so weird, so that, bizarre, is that an appeal to sexism? Uh, yeah, that's a drink. I mean, it's appealing sex. Uh, I'm coming up with a diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to have sex I'm with me all like, the time, which is largely the reason he married me. 
psychiatrist runs in like he's disrupting a wedding at for you know speak now forever hold your peace objection that's a frigid bitch <laughs> <laughs> the, i guess the, the uh, effects expand of the on that really did you to change what'd you do to him did you let him did you how many times a week yeah what what because if it's under four, I'm going to hold you in criminal contempt. Are you a missionary, or do you like to get weird like a man crying? Yes. How many hammocks do you own? Yeah. <laughs> do you like swings? <laughs> he screamed at me about that and tried to overturn this table. Luckily, it was... Like Jesus. Bolted yeah. down you just the, um, portray yeah. Johnny Depp as Jesus. <laughs> Good work, Amber. <laughs> Did she say he welded down? It was really calm yeah. and sweet, right. and... Thanking me, and he does seem like a guy who has like a five thousand pound table made of wood that doesn't even exist anymore. Right, like it was taken from the redwoods. Yeah. <laughs> Did she just say that she he thanked her after sex? I don't know humanity. Oh. Well, I mean, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I would. <laughs> like high five, good game. Yeah. yeah. Thanks again. I'm going to give you an ecto cooler and uh, a chocolate bar. <laughs> No, please don't poop on the bedspread. <laughs> I, I saved his life, and he wouldn't be doing this without me. And I was telling him these things, and I was at one point in our conversations, I told him about how. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Uh, uh, please try to continue <laughs> without what you said, please. Um, I said something to him. All right, and, I'm uh, no more. He, there can't be any more objection. <laughs> but he did it. Like we're crying, it was, it was the weirdest thing. It's it like you drink. You never ever know that when you have too much of something, it tastes bad, but then you have more of it, and it tastes, and then it tastes good again. Pretty good. That's a good thing. It's like amber. That's where I am. <laughs> Object. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but you know, I didn't want to make him. Feel embarrassed? Oh, fuck! Right again. Gosh, I shouldn't have she done. The, I shouldn't have done that drunken his... Mr. Miyagi bit. <laughs> she can't do it. Mr. Rattlecrata, yes, sir. Regret to inform you, I've had lying with. Yes, sir. <laughs> The doctors and nurses didn't tell like me not four to. people who remember. It's actually a heartbreaking scene. It's great. It really is. He's an unbelievable actor. I forgot that scene existed until I showed it to my son a couple years ago. Yeah. I was like, oh, I forgot about this really sad, drunk He's my Miyagi favorite scene. Japanese actor named Pat. Yes, by far. Screaming <laughs> at me. Also. <laughs> I said when I didn't say anything. What's his name on Happy Days? I tell him, Johnny. I oh, I don't remember. Arnold? Was it Arnold? Arnold? Pat Mori Morita? Was it another? Oh, his name is Pat Morita. Yeah. All right, Pat hold on. Ma I, want, I want to see if she's crying. Let's, we'll go out to sure. that mug club and find out his name. The chances are it's not even the same guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jet Li. He was um, accusing me of having a man in the house with me. Oh, where could he ever get that idea? Single, Again. You know, in a cabin, it's basically one room. With a closet and a bathroom. And, and an elevator with James Franco in it. To hide, really? I mean, there's a closet and a bathroom. And he, at one point... And a Tesla with Elon Musk in it. I was hiding somebody in the house. <laughs> Another point, he was communicating with someone not in the room. It, it, it would this sounds like she's trying to describe psychosis that she read from a textbook, which, by the way, has never been presented anywhere else. You know, that's not, remember we were talking about the MMPI two yes. test, yeah. and uh, and and I, you can take it on you can take it online. You can at least look at some of the questions because I know that that was where her uh, or sorry, the psychologist said that she uh, was lying through the test. And I was curious about this. And there are questions like that exactly. Right? Do you speak to people in the room who aren't there? Right? Do you see? So it sounds to me like she read through a psychological textbook and she's trying to ascribe that to him. Whereas these are never concerns she brought up before that before now. Right. No, and, and the MMPI is good in that regard. I mean, I don't want to give away all the secrets, but uh, questions on there are critical items that'll, that, that nobody responds to correctly. But right. if they're trying to sound crazy, they will. Like, right. sometimes I see in black and white. No, yeah, you don't. no, you don't. <laughs> well, and also, <laughs> is it really that when he's going, hey, is the guy who was banging my wife still here? Yeah. He's not talking to no one. He's trying to find someone he's in like, this house. He's like, he's like, Elon? Uncle Frank? James? Buzz? 
they make for a fun conversation though clinically like i've had clients and you go over the test with them and you'll be like so sometimes you see black and white say more right. oh, oh. i'm a racist oh, okay well that was a misinterpretation of right. wow that was weird all right let's see what she I uh, see two colors yes <laughs> while he finished choice. the process of detox in la and i had my friends out um with my girlfriends there to support me as per usual so let's, Michelle, can you pull up 272, so a please? Detox in LA is a girls' night? <laughs> <laughs> Just showing up with like bachelorette party with like penis lollipops. Yeah. Hey, detox! Detox night. Detox per usual. LA. Seaweed wrap! Did Mr. Depp <laughs> communicate with you by text? I snuck in some mineral spirits. <laughs> We're going to take laxatives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like eating the raw corn husks. Hey. <laughs> this is good for the skin. Ah! Johnny's really been shitting the bed lately. Yeah. Oh. I really didn't mean to poop his bed. I think it was maybe the Light corn bulb. cob pipe that I ate. I don't know. Uh, Let's drink turpentine and ruin some sheets. On that. So you want redact it? Can we redact that second I'll redact message? It. Ma'am, what color is your hair? I don't know anymore. Do you and Johnny uh, share the same right. five color hair dye? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, no, no. He uses just for men, and I use just for bitches. <laughs> Actually, it's mostly for bitches. And it's Amber, a generic. Show you now what is it's next to it at Walmart. And this is on for God's sake, I only got seven million dollars out of this. <laughs> Text message from Mr. Sorry, Depp after I gave to charity $7 million out of this. Yes. Right. And just oh, so that we can okay. highlight Okay, just here. to let you know, I'm fine, my angel. I miss you, of He's course, gone. but this was the right thing to do to speed up the process. I love you more than life. Yours, Steve. Steve. This is sent to Amber Heard. All right, let's see what she says. Yours, <clears throat> Steve. Do you see that? I do. So what, if any, expressions was Mr. Depp giving you at this point that he was angry with you ever uh, having to help participate with the detox or to be on the island or anything along that line? Objection form compound. I I'll allow it, but just... Oof. I would have objected. That was definitely a compounding question. Clear. 272 yeah. has already been entered into evidence without that redaction, and there wasn't any objection, so I, I would wish... If I could have both sides to keep track of their evidence, it's not my job to keep, keep this. Also, I object Thank to Johnny Depp's right. representation, silly barber pole tie. It's really the party's responsibility to take care of the record, not mine. My, my apologies on that one, Your Honor. She really does have All dead's right. eyes, like the doll eyes. Oh, she does, eyes. yeah. And when she comes for half your shit and those eyes roll over white. <laughs> no legal notification or papers have been sent. She writes her article on HuffPo. Sometimes gold digging ore goes away. Sometimes she stays. Sometimes gold digging ore doesn't go away. Oh, we got another one? Sometimes gold digging ore gives you M -M MDMA <laughs> and looks into your soul. Let's see what this text is. Uh, he this was response. hallucinating and angry at me at various moments. And she said, I can't live without you. You are my everything. There are no words. Fake, 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 fake. I just want you to be okay and happy. I love you more every single day. Can't imagine my life without you. Hey, by the way, that kind of gets to uh, the abuse of don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. When someone is abusive, they try and make it so that you cannot leave. That's a big thing. Right. Uh, and, told me and it's often I combined with them leaving temporarily and coming back. So they put you on your heels and you fear being abandoned while they make you know that if you abandon them, they could kill themselves. They could, right? They want to put, they want to put the responsibility of, y of you on you and the responsibility of them on you. And that's what she's doing. I'm not a, I'm not a psychologist, no, but that's but you're, you're from, definitely onto something. And then there's also the, the pattern disruption that she would engage in of like, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Okay, that breaks him from what he wants to do. Then the little thing in your mind, the periaqueductal gray matter to geek out for a second, makes you notice when your freedom's being inhibited. Right. And then anger starts to come up. But then if that anger starts to come out, then, oh, no, we can't talk right now. Right. And Yeah. 
That makes sense. And then she puts on uh, she dresses like uh, she dresses like Samuel Adams. <laughs> well, I bargained with him uh, about me doing the role. And he told me. Ah, uh, drink. That's her mentioning her role in a movie. Oh, oh. gosh. Mostly well, the most, the only role I'm concerned with is the lack of them you he's were laughing. taking in the hay. He's laughing. Oh, he's, oh, he's laughing. laughing. Oh, my God. Um, don't say what you said. Just say what he said, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not um, finishing any more drinks. I don't care what the rules are. <laughs> he reluctantly kind of agreed to me working on this movie or taking a job. Ah! <laughs> movie in London at the time. Called paramedic. I, I enjoy your I, weekend. <laughs> I wore no makeup or minimal makeup in the movie. No sexy clothing. She just talked about how good looking she is. She's like, is that, I just, I did everything I could to not make myself attractive, and you know, it's a lost cause. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was like, no makeup, and they looked and they said, I thought you were wearing all the makeup. And I didn't wear any revealing clothing, and they said, sweetheart, <laughs> you'd be gorgeous if you wore a tarp. And I said, no. No. I said, no. They said, even if you dressed like Shakespeare on the witness stand. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for my last like day or two. Here, take the skull. <laughs> She's holding it the whole time. <laughs> we need like a humble brag counter. I'm going right to... Uh... Ask you to turn to. It's not even like humble bragging. This is bragging, bragging. Defendants three ten. Oh, she just looked like she was confused a little bit. Like maybe she was surprised by something. Uh, like three ten. I can't count that far. Yeah. Do you have communications with Mr. Depp hands. about auditioning? Trying to figure out the difference. In this time is it, is it six? Honor, I'm going to object to the exhibit. It's hearsay. More hearsay. Oh, she is getting ragdolled. Mm-hmm. She is getting ragdolled. She just can't get a rhythm going. I think they saw what happened yesterday, where she was going off, you know, these soliloquies. Where yeah. she was like, and then, and then you realize, and this, and they just decided that if she can't do that, she has no sort of factual leg to stand on. So let's make her have to stick to the facts. Mm. So it's a pretty good contrast to show when she can talk and she can opine, which people saw yesterday, and they felt like they were being manipulated, and then today. It's a good strategy for the attorney to say, let's make sure now that there's no hearsay allowed. There's no, uh, you know, painting it with a brush of your point of view. Let's stick to what is allowable, what is admissible. And she can't do it. This is really bad for her. And while that's being redacted. I'm and I still don't think you, he's going to win the defamation. Agree. Uh, but I think he's won. Mr. Depp saying to you in this time frame, we're talking in November He does. You just donate the money to wherever she said she was going to. Anymore. Yeah. Or not taking on anymore. Or, or donate that. it to, like, the opposing charity. Yeah. <laughs> like, if she was going to donate to PETA, like, donate it to, like, the Seal Killing Foundation. Yeah. yeah. What's the opposing <laughs> charity for a children's hospital, though? Well, she said ACLU and then a children's hospital. I don't know. Like, Alzheimer's. the hospital for the elderly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, instead of battered housewives, he just sends it to batter housewives. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Gillian Maxwell Legal Fund. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to work on, and he was furious at me for. He found, uh, on, um, like, we call them sides. They're just pieces of an audition pages. All right, you know what, guys? I can't do this. I'm going to be drunk. Let's uh, look. We're going to see you. Are we Thursday? <laughs> Just can't you do a <laughs> job? You're going to be okay. It is Thursday. Are we Thursday? Yeah, it is Thursday. <laughs> Shut up. I, look. It is. Shut up, you piece <laughs> of <No> shit. For real. <laughs> hey, we, hold on. We're, uh, you're going to be in. Um, hold on. All right. Everybody. Well, wait. You're going to be in Lincoln, Lincoln. Yep. Yep. Lincoln, Missouri. It's something like that. Yeah. Lincoln, Nebraska. Where are you going to be? Lincoln, Nebraska, and uh, Springfield, Missouri. This is Springfield, Missouri. There's a Burger King there, I hear. Oh, we'll just throw it over the fence. Marlon Brando. When you're done with it, favorite. take what you want. You just give me what you don't want. Let's throw it over the fence. <laughs> and then I'm going to be in Spokane, I don't know, somewhere in July. <laughs> it's a secret show. We don't even have it on the website because... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take you chat. Ugh. <laughs> 